thing here. Oh, stop the thing here because I'm gonna. I have the video going on here, this tab. Uh, but, but there, I think we're live. Oh, right. there, there we go. Yep. Hello. Hello. And welcome to these three people watching, which might be one person. This I can't hear you. Um, <laughs> there we go. Now I can. Good. All right. Super professional sounding, and let's get, okay, so we got this thing. Okay, I stripped out the bio part that we needed to because I'm not trying to out this person. Right, um, obviously. And, okay, all right, so. Let's say hi first, and tell people what we're doing before we dive into it. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, I'm Morgan Hizzlewood, and this is Patrick Hopkins, otherwise known as the Query Helpline. And we both are severely addicted to rewriting other people's queries because it hurts a lot less. At least it hurts us a lot less. And because we can do it because you and right. your query just, it, I mean, anybody doing their own query doesn't work. No, as we, no. You know, as we've discussed. He did mine. Did it work uh, well? Did you like the result? Um, I mean, I've sent out one query and one bounced, so I, I still need to send that one back I out. See. So we'll I see. see. We'll see. Yeah, it's been, you know, three days, clearly. Which in publishing these days is about four seconds, honestly, because people are so backed up, as you probably heard. Um, yeah. Because yeah. what do you, do you want to talk about that briefly or not? I've heard they're backed up, but I've been getting form rejections at the same rate that I had before. So. Oh, that's so precious-ish, I, I don't know. I'm like, like they, they, they might be backed up, but they seem Not to be rejecting to just as quickly <laughs> as ever, so. Oh. Is that, you sending them your queries, uh, synopsis, and first chapter? That was my old stuff. So okay. Oh, we'll right. see so what the new great. stuff does. That, that's before um, me then, okay. Right, that's right. That. Also, okay. um, I don't think I actually updated my first chapter. I think I started to, and then that's not the version I'm actually sending out, so whatever. Okay. All right. Mm. It's your form of rejection, not mine. Um, exactly. So yeah. I see we have Dal and Darren in the audience. Hello and welcome. Uh, so, yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll get to it probably tomorrow because tonight is talking. We have 10 pages tonight and it is not all going to get done. I might have to do a solo tomorrow to get through through some of this stuff because, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm busy. I've got a no, lot hey, of You have a link, which is a good thing. I mean, people shouldn't be spending all their time with me on queries, much as that would, you know, fill me with joy ish. Um, but you have other people to, who, you know, want your time. So I do. I do. And most people who want my time are over 10 years of age. So after 9 30 is a good time. It doesn't matter. They don't, you don't have to wipe their butts. That's, uh, that's great. I prefer that kind of person, honestly. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Someday, <laughs> all of them will be able to wipe their own butts. <laughs> or we'll have someone else to do that for them. I don't, I really don't want to even, let's go into this because this is a mistake that we see, I see a lot. Um, sure. Let me go ahead and go ahead and, get the, and this time we can just keep on the same document instead of trying to switch 83 times. Yeah. I made it really easy this time. See? <laughs> One document, ten. Uh, literally, I'm not making this up. Ten pages of material. It goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one. All right. Let's just do this. And sit this so, editing. Make sure you're in suggesting mode. Okay. This we see a lot, and you can just do this because obviously you're writing. Um, this is like the, the yeah. act of writing yeah. is what you're doing. So you see. Let, let me read the chap or the paragraphs aloud uh, for our audience who may be listening instead of watching. Uh, the first paragraph is: I'm writing to seek representation for my thir um, 113,000 word adult contemporary fantasy novel, Hedgerow Court. I'm reaching out to you in particular because parentheses researched agent reasons. So. Contemporary okay, so. fantasy is definitely a genre. Is it? Okay. Um, yes. Because... because default fantasy is second world, typically. Okay. So yeah. I was, um, let so, me do a thing yeah. here. Actually, I didn't, I have not looked at this stuff in advance of this because I wanted to show people how you do it, you know, without taking seven hours before it. I didn't pregame for this. So um, I have to work oh, for my compendium to respond, which as we discussed takes a bit. Yeah, I have to reload it because it, it does, it, it's, blah, blah, it's not responding. No, the waiter exit page is faster than the page. Let me reload it. 
Um, anyway, um, so I, I mean, I look for a contemporary fantasy, but I, I mean, because I would just straight off go with fantasy there. Um, um, second yeah. world fantasy versus based in our world fantasy okay. are, you know, different okay. markets. But how can you tell that? Okay, explain this to me because I don't know. Um, because I don't know fantasy as we've discussed. Uh -huh. How can you tell? Okay, is it the fact that it's Florida that makes it contemporary fantasy? Is it the question of what? I'm sorry. Yeah, how do you tell us in, it's in, you said it's a, it's in this world and it's a second world? Uh, second world fantasy is set in a world that is not Earth and is not right now. Okay. So, so it, that's it, we it have might be, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, in yeah. the audience, Dal asks, contemporary fantasy or urban fantasy? I believe the urban fantasy tropes involve, you know, vampires, werewolves, some sort of paranormal, no, that was even though, saying, yeah. you know, they're, they're just more about the plot than the romance. And that's, you know, why they're not um, paranormal romances, but contemporary fantasy is, you know, the magical element um, in, in, you know, a contemporary setting. Um, maybe it's a bakery or something like that, where you bake magical goods and that kind of thing. Um, I do know that some people want to use magical realism, but magical realism is typically uh, Latina. Yeah. Latina. A lot of people who are not in that, from that uh, community are writing that stuff and it's called fabulism. What, it's what I'm told. I don't know because I don't know this stuff. It's a little um, wiggly. There are people who know more than me stuff. say that. I'm just... If um, if you hesitate, if you're not sure if you fully qualify, just go contemporary fantasy. It um, if you are sure you're in that niche, definitely you know cling to fabulism or magical realism. But if you are not 100% sure that your writing is part of that community, I would just go with contemporary fantasy. So, I have a, a reference. This person, I, I'm looking at my companion, and I have a. a Store. I used a contemporary fantasy back in 2010. So, mm -hmm. and this person got representation. I mean, this, nice. you know, here it is. Um, Dear Miss Bladell Braylor, it's just supposed to be the driver, blah, blah, blah. The book is called Harvest of Fire. I have no idea if it's published or not, but that's, you know, someone who used it and an agent liked it. Um, and I have what this, was the uh, author's name? Because the title might have changed. Uh, hold on. I don't have that, but I can find oh, it. Okay. So, I didn't copy the names out, but I can just load this in. Um, sure. Harry Connolly is the name on this website. Um, okay. So that, I don't know. Um, C-O-N-N-O-L-L-Y. I don't know if that helps you. My um, debut novel, Child of Fire, was named to Publisher Weekly's Best 100 Books of 2009. Epic fantasy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so one thing we don't need here is novel because that's implied. Uh, right. I don't know what we need this either because reaching out to you is obviously a, a thing. These might seem ticky tack, but everywhere the agent doesn't have to read takes them to the you know your pitch that much faster. And these people are good at reading and editing, and so they they notice little things like that. Um, okay, we don't. Okay, this is okay. So here's one of the things I covered in my uh, intensive. Okay, break in. You just turned an action into a noun. You've also de-escalated um, because we have this non-linear. Okay, this here, right? This happens second. The first thing that happens linearly in this plot, okay? This. So we break okay. this, right? Oh, while Patrick is doing that, I'm going to read the first paragraph for those at home listening. Uh, geriatric care nurse Anna McGann work bleeds into home life after a senior citizen's midnight break-in. The intruder is a selkie and, and her estranged grandmother, unwittingly compelled to find her long-lost grandchild. Anna's heritage has made them targets of a machinating po politician, Baron Dudley. To protect herself from magical conscription, Anna joins the staff at Florida's only nursing home for the supernatural, Hedgerow Court. Inside its walls, geriatric Jenny Greenteeth, uh, Kaguapa, uh, Domowick, and other beings from all over the world age safely, hidden away from humanity. Please apologize. I apologize. I do not speak anything but English. Okay. Um, 
this paragraph has 10 characters. Let me count them for you, okay? Anna, Selkie, two, grandmother, three, four, five, six. I, I seven, believe eight. there are examples of um, famous mythical creatures, but I don't think they need to be named. In a query, you don't want to name more than three things. The main character, maybe a setting, and the bad guy. If you've got, you know. I've seen more. It's very hard to do because right, we have so much stuff going on right now. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of plot. That's great. But we have 10 in one pair. It's such a lift. Yeah. Okay. I had someone to think that was a compliment. It's not. Um, it, 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 if you have something that's hard to lift, it's hard to carry, hard to, you know, do is a bad thing. Um, so uh, let me see if I can do that. See the, uh, okay, so Anna, okay, skip to the six. Okay, that right there, those are two characters, okay? We have to keep at least Anna in and probably the Baron as well. We don't necessarily need all of these other characters in there. Um, wait, 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 I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Is the, is the intruder Selkie her estranged grandmother, or did the Selkie come with her grandmother? My guess is the Selkie and her grandmother are together. That's my just because of the of the um, proximity. But they're um, talking about um, not, compelled to find her long lost grandchild. I I almost feel like the intruder is her grandmother, who is a Selkie. And they but have it's very unclear. Yeah. So this a uh, so that's one other uh, core problem with this. Um, I'm just I'm gonna bold this guy. Um, and I'm going to bold Anna because we have to keep them in, but a lot of the rest of this can die because yeah. it's very complicated. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, I've never done this before like this, but I just, this, yeah. the ten, 10 characters in one paragraph is a, so we have a couple of issues here. Too many. I, I think we can just say inside its walls, famous other beings. Yep. Or infamous, you know. And then you let the kid, and then you, the, the the agent will discover that world is in. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I think the writer wants to say, "Hey, look at this this fun thing I you know I thought up," and that's great. But let the pages do that job. Um, yeah. Because yeah. to me, nursing over the supernatural is enough that I'm interested in that concept. I want to see yeah. it executed, and I don't know what a C guapa is. Okay, I don't know anything about any of these nouns, so. Like, unless these are very common to this genre, which I, I don't think I've seen. Uh, let me see if I can find, let me just look for it quick for this one and see if, okay. No, no, no results for to drop it in there. Nothing for even Siku. Oh, okay. So, okay. That's that. Um, I mean, I thought I knew a lot of fantastic creatures and didn't recognize them off the bat, no, but. No. Um, let me spell characters properly first. Um, I did write a picture book of the mythical creatures recently. I don't remember reading any of these, but I mean, I was reading like, I, I read at least 400 names of creatures. So <laughs> for two of them to not, you know. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, okay, so after a blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. okay, so she's working in one nursing, in one care facility setting, let's say. And then someone breaks into the senior center, senior center. And then she joins the staff at this place, I think is what is happening here. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Here. It sounds like so, um, her grandmother is being compelled and broke into her workplace. And that's when she finds out she's magic, maybe? Cat, get off my ankle. Here, have a toy. I don't, I can't tell. I got it, but I got to get the, this beginning first because we have this, we have referring to, do we need the Selkie? I, I believe so. Why? Um, oh, is I, it, is it, are the Selkie and the strange mother the same person? I believe the Selkie is the grandmother. Okay, that's an, and uh, I believe that our main character finds out she's a Selkie as well. Okay, that's, or has well, that heritage. Because that, uh, well, okay. Okay, after. I mean, I mean this is a risk. Uh, her. Yeah. 
Luckily, because it is fantasy, um, you can go up to 120,000. Uh, so that helps. Although 120 is usually for a different world, it's not contemporary. So it might be pushing it for, for length. I'm not sure the difference between urban fantasy type things and epic fantasy for length, but it's, it's not outside the realm of possibilities. So. Okay. okay, what is she, what is this senior citizen breaking into? Uh, breaks into the um where does it say that i i mean i sincerely i don't see it I, I maybe i'm reading it wrong but like i think it's her workplace wait, wait wait is she working at a single person's house or is she working at a see we have the only thing we see home. okay is this is the only indication I see of a specific care facility setting. Okay, that's right, you know, right. And that's to protect herself from this thing that happened. Okay, so she could be a, a home care. Yeah, a lot of geriatric care nurses work in the household. So yeah, maybe she's at her grandmother's workplace, and the selkie is the person yeah. being sent by the baron. I don't. I'm confused. Yeah. I mean, this story is 100% up my alley. <laughs> I, and once I'm, we get it all, you know, right. linear and understandable, that'd be great because this, this yeah. concept looks interesting to me. It looks like the beginning of a Marvel movie, frankly. Um, <laughs> but right now what we have is a whole bunch of, like we have 10 characters in the first paragraph, which is just going to destroy me. Um, we have to delete like half of them. Um, uh, we can we have I think we have to keep the selfie because it's it's related to her so that's one, um, Anna, and then the Baron. I'm not sure we need anybody else. There we go. Inside it dwells geriatric mythical beings from yep. all over the world, age safely. Uh, and I don't know how to feel heal that right. I don't know what a selfie is or something. Um, and I want to give an action like su supposedly mythical or um, infamous mythical. I don't know. Okay, so let's just do this. Okay, exchange my letter. That's what I need. Um, this is going to take more than one. We're not going to finish this tonight, just in case no. anyone's curious. Like, there's too much that I don't understand about this book to be able to like sew from one place to the next, from the beginning and end, rather. So that yeah. you know, the 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 bracket stuff I leave is very comfortable. What I do uh, because I don't know what, what's happening. Yeah, um, but it's a great starting point, and you is. know, it gives you, you a concept move. outline of where you need to go because it. I mean, right from we have nonlinear from the beginning, and we have to go in order because you have to you even have to be able to see a path. From character situations, inside instant stakes, and right now we, we go inside the instant first, really. Um, so let's just do this. Let's Wait. talk to that. Oh, okay. Um, yes, there we go. You're not going to be able to read all this and have it make sense just because no. you don't have the information. Yes. But, you know. Okay. Um, what's this now? Uh, language about. This is this is a tell, and we need to, I, showing it would show the, the world better, but also it isn't, I'm not necessarily I'm not certain. Like this is the kind of thing where I, clearing it up helps me understand it, but I'm betting pretty strongly that when I do final cuts to this for word count, I'm not going to need that because you know, this, I think we can combine those two sentences: unwittingly yeah. compelled to find and. Yeah. Her heritage has made them targets. Because if you say grandmother is a selkie, and then you mm -hmm. say Baron Dudley, fascinating Bob, politician Baron Dudley has do compelled it. grandma to find. Do it, do it, do it. Okay. Yeah. You can do things too. Do it. As, sure as do I that. said, I unlike unlike Patrick, I usually use your own wording.
Present tense? Well, it's happened in the past, right? Her queries so I, I don't in present know. tense? I don't think you, you, 90, most of them are, but like this happened before the first act of the book. Pretty cool to me. If the um, compelling is still happening during the pages, I think is compelling. Yeah, is a I mean, it's, yeah. Um, the writer might know more about. I mean, it's it's, it's not. We can't answer that question because uh, we don't have the synopsis. I, at least it's not in this document. Um, it might be. If I, this is a kind of thing where I, I would look in the synopsis and or ask the writer. You know, does the book start with the break-in scene, which would make sense to me. Um, the compelling grandma to find this person feels to me feels more like a prologue, mm -hmm. which is illegal in my world. Um, so, <laughs> but you know, the break-in sounds like one of those, you know, in media res thing that's- Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. in res, yes. Um, super popular for starting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. As, be, as long as- fun opening, yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if you can pull it off, it works. If if people are too confused about the world and the characters, you might want to back up a little. Yeah. But, okay. Okay, okay. So he is from being- Whatever with conscription, because that's going to be a. We have conscription is another noun that should be a verb, because again you have action that you're trying to avoid, um, and this is making I'm making it passive on purpose because she's trying to prevent someone from acting on her. I'm showing her lack of agency and his control of the situation. Wait, wait, wait! I didn't oh. even know you were capable of oh, yeah. making things passive. Deliberately, yeah. See, there's 1.092 passive verb per successful query. <gasps> um, the most I've seen in a query is six, a couple with five. Um, <laughs> if, if the point is to say she is, you know, some outside force is doing things to her while still focusing on her, then right. passive is to go because it increases attention because she's trying to escape this thing, you know, and not be controlled. Um, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I love this language here um, because it implies the existence of more somewhere else. Um, <laughs> it's their only thing, right? Um, right. And I, it, in fact, if I if I had to cut language, I, I don't want to have to cut that anymore because it just it shows in so few words, which is great. Um, yeah. Well, within it's on the inside. Because inside can actually mean like you have a sliver of wall and something that's within the, but in, gotcha. within the walls is a better. Yeah. Um, Plus, within is a more writing word. Okay. This is just telling. This is telling, 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 telling. This is like, this is a world building thing as we discover her interacting with stuff. And all you're doing is telling her, telling us, there are chapters in which things happen with these characters. That's great, but we need to see it. And I might even cut this in a later draft, but I need to see it to know that it's you know, not essential. So I'm just going to put show that because there's no re there's no point for me to concept a sentence there because I'm just going to have a bunch of blanks and the person, I'd rather work with a person to you know, formulate a sentence. Because right. um, I would really literally have like three consecutive brackets and it's just my bother. Uh, uh, okay. All right. So here's the thing. This is a fun noun. Um, now the question is. Let me read the next paragraph for those following along at home. The learning curve is steep as Anna struggles to find her place among the outcasts who are now her co-workers, especially an attractive yet antagonistic Kelpie. When Baron Dudley puts Anna's new workplace on his hit list, she must find ways to use her weakness, her humanity, to her advantage. 
If Anna can't foil the Baron, she could lose everyone she loves to his wrath. Jeez. So is she fully human or part human? I'm a little uncertain. There's another world building thing we don't have, honestly. Yeah, I, I have the synopsis, at least part of it in email, but we don't have permission to do it, so. Um, no, that's fine. Okay, so. Oh, thank you question. for being by Adrian, and definitely come check back anytime. The stream will be up later. Yep. Okay. Um, hold on, we had a question. Oh, um, I've had people not tell me where they live, and it's just a thing. They have like a, a blank in the query. Um, but um, then they just tell the agent, I would not think that they would, an agent would care where you are as long as you're not like, for example, God, would it be a bad place to live? Uh, China, maybe? For a US agent, just because of the, um, the, the restrictions on, um, on um, communication. Um, Some of them might hesitate just because of bad experiences with time zones, though. Yeah. So I, I understand wanting to hold off on that until you actually have the agent. And I, I think it's fine not to say where you are. Let me see. I have a document, actually, of. Uh, Oh yeah. Um, do we want to look at the successful document queries and check the spreadsheet? The problem, the spreadsheet doesn't indicate location. Uh, yeah, because also, many of them were clipped the bio portion in the first place. Yeah, and I'll, another thing is like if you're looking for specific locations like Ireland, it could just be you know I visited where they, the number of false positives could be massive for that. Um, yeah, yeah. A good agent will see the writing, and that's what they care about. Yeah. Um, but some of them might, you know, need whatever other situation I, it's, you know, not, not my call to make. Um, you can avoid it, uh, avoid listing it, but agents are good at reading, so they'll notice that. Um, just like they'll notice if you don't include education. You don't have to, but they're, I mean, in the, the realm of how many agents there are, it's easy to imagine a couple that will be like, oh, you don't have a college degree, we'll forget that, um, which would be very silly, but, you know. I don't include my education because it's not applicable. Um, I do because it is, but uh, it's, right. I mean, I'm a software engineer, but I have a coach, you know, and yeah. there are plenty of people out there without who are great writers. Yeah. There, again, the, the issue is um, like the agent looking at only the pages versus look at the whole writer. To me, right. the, 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 I mean, uh, as long as your bio isn't disqualifying, um, yeah. like I'm a serial killer trying to write a picture book, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dell says, uh, thank you, Argentina is fine with the states. It's just I yeah. don't want those labels. It's bad yeah. enough to be openly blind. Um, yeah. I mean, you also see agents who actively want, um, <laughs> who are specifically targeting uh, marginalized uh, communities. Um, yeah, yeah. At, at that point, it's a question of what you want to tell people. I had one person mm -hmm. who wrote in, a, in his um, bio, if in case it matters, I'm this label, and if it doesn't, then I, it, you know, then disregard it. And that I took that out because I felt like it was weakening the bio overall. Um, yeah. It's a antagonistic, which I don't think you need to bio. Um, okay, so, so the question is where we want to um, include, stay with the native hit list or something like targets as your workplace. I think hit list is okay. I'm not in love with it, but it's you know, um, okay. She can't. Okay, she must. Let's see if she can't. So we have a double. Okay, this is basically a double uh, stake sentence here. She must find ways to do this to her advantage, but if she can't, and using it to her advantage uh, results in falling the Baron. So basically, they're saying the same thing twice. Um, so, yeah, do we want the foil, the baron, or um, do we want to lose, just skip from must find ways to use her humanity to her advantage, or she could lose everyone she loves to his wrath? I would infuse the weakness language in with the okay. stake sentence. Um, okay. And do something like, let me say, I'm going to take a bit, uh, but really, she must foil him. I wish to foil him. Weakness. Okay. For she loses, and this is still vague. I'd like to know exactly what loses means because it's a fantasy, and loses could mean 
any, I mean, I don't know what a selfie is still. Um, but like loses is vague. Um, some agents won't care. I figured better to be specific. Um, okay, so now they the bigger. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Are we showing her? Are we thinking that she's showing her humanity in being a geriatric care nurse? Um, um, because I, I wasn't sure if we. I I thought that get, maybe being a part selkie puts him gives him control over her, but her human side can get out. Oh, yeah. no. mm. the fact that she's human, right? Okay. Um, I I don't know if she's fully human or not. Unclear. Right. Um, so. So we're, I think our question is whether her her humanity is as empathy or her humanity as existing as a human is the question, right? Right. Or she has a human half and a selkie half and the human half can resist. Or, okay. You know. All right. That's so we need to know. Uh, humanity is in. I read a lot of this genre. <laughs> I don't. As usual. I read a lot of the stuff we have coming through. Okay, so I don't know the comps at all. Um, I do not either. Okay, and that in this case, I think that means they're I okay, recognize right? the names, but the the I author names, the book names actually more okay. than the author names. Okay, um, I don't know. I'm just going to look them up very quick. Yeah. So okay. the comp paragraph is: Hedro Court will appeal to fans of Daryl Gregory's Spoonbenders and T.J. Clune's House in the Cerulean Sea, who enjoy humorous, empathetic fantasy. It is intended to be a trilogy, but can be tailored to stand alone. I am, I'm a Florida native who worked my way from a teen hospital volunteer to a geriatric care nurse. I still live in the state with my husband, six-year-old daughter, and our small menagerie. As a progressive-minded bisexual in a sea of red, I'm proud to write stories that show there's more to Florida than Florida man. I can be reached at the email I emailed you this from. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and I appreciate your consideration. Sincerely, me. Okay, so uh, House of Cerulean Sea was a bestseller on three new, uh, newspaper lists. It came out um, about a year and a half ago. I think it's okay as a comp because the other one yeah. is is not like a big thing. Um, yeah, it was a good it, seller. It's recognizable, but it wasn't, you know, a blockbuster. So it sounds pretty solid. Yeah, I think the comps are fine, which is nice because I. I Yay! We had last so week we had so many comp Harry Potter, uh, Sarah J. Maas, um, C.S. Lewis, and some other like huge thing, and it's like. Have you read anything published in this millennia? Since, since computers became a thing. <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> was... Have you read anything that wasn't, you know, made uh, a movie? Of... Grocery store. <laughs> if it's for sale, the grocery store is really big. All right. Uh, I don't need, Sorry, need, I have uh, a cat gnawing yeah. on me right now. I see that. We need a uh, GC. Okay. Okay. Are you done gnawing on me? Okay. So this might be something where I work with the writer. Oh, we need to stand alone with. Uh... Yeah. We do not bat at my face. My face is not a eh, gentle. Gentle. Sorry. Because so much fantasy is sequence of the yeah. series that we need to have the retaliation either this is a standalone thing or, you know. But oh, again, yeah. it has to be by, by itself book. The yeah. Harry Potter series, that first book, works fine on its own. Um, there's lots of interesting there's stuff that doesn't end, but the main plot does end. Um, okay, that's that's uh, where you have that. I'm so used to seeing it at the top. Which is good that you have them there because the language I had up top was going to be trash. The, the standard wording is um, 
Pedro Tim Court Perry is a standalone is. novel with a uh, serious potential, but it has to actually be a standalone novel. You yeah. need to have a complete plot. The, um, the, the main plot has to resolve. Other stuff can be floating around um, because people, you know, lives don't end, you know, all neatly and such. Right. Um, I read a, a um, The Con Code a month or two ago, Gentle. and there's a, a queer subplot in there, and it doesn't end. And that's fine. They're pursuing a thing, and it's not part of the, you know, the main resolution of the book. That's fine. Uh, but the main plot does resolve. I'm not going to tell you what it is because, um, you know, that's not what this is for. But um, anyway, let me see. Can be tailored as language I'd advise against using because it implies that it doesn't stand alone already. And if it doesn't, uh, I would think most agents would not want to look at it because they want a complete, you know, they want a book that they can, you know, look at right now, is done right now. Especially not a debut novel. A lot of places may option book two and three, but they're not going to actually publish them unless you actually sell well enough. Yeah. Um, Catechist says hello, and he would like to gnaw on you. No. <laughs> I don't do cats. All right, so are we done with this one? or? Uh... And again, we you can read it if you, a lot if you want to. But I think we, we're good. I'll yep. go ahead and read it really quick while you start looking at the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so here's here's the updated version. I'm seeking representation for my 113,000 word adult contemporary fantasy hetero court. I'm reaching out to you because researched reasons. After a strange grandmother breaks into wherever and selfie language stuff, geriatric care nurse Anna McGann, something work leads into home life. Machinating politician Dudley, Baron Dudley is compelling grandmother to find her long lost grandchild. To protect herself from being whatever with magical conscription, Anna joins the staff at Florida's only nursing home for the supernatural, Hedra Court. Inside its walls, geriatric, supposedly mythical or infamous mythical beings from all over the world age safely, hidden away from humanity. <clears throat> The learning curve is steep as Anna struggles to find her place amongst outcasts who are now her co-workers, especially an attractive yet antagonistic healthy. But when Baron Dudley puts Anna's new workplace on his hit list, she must find ways to foil him with her weakness, her humanity, before she loses everyone she loves to his wrath. Hedro Court will appeal to fans of uh, uh, Spoonbenders and TJ Clune's House on the Cerulean Sea who enjoy humorous, empathetic fantasy. It is a standalone novel with serious potential. And then we just dropped the whole, I can be reached at this email because it's implicit. So moving on to the next one. Dear agent, Laurel Lancaster is a liar and a cheat, but you'll love her anyway, just like her boyfriend does. In fairness, she does not he doesn't know she's a liar or a cheat, but Laurel has her reasons for the way she turned out. After she and David call it quits and she starts a new relationship, a manic episode sends her to a mental institution. Demons from her past resurface and Laurel realizes that she is still pining for her first, her high school boyfriend, Adam Potter. Laurel is barely home from a two week stay at Brownsboro retreat when the universe delivers news that may send her further spiraling. David is dead in a car, quote unquote, accident. Laura believes in her gut that she bears the blame. Now she must figure out how to cope with her mental health, her past, and a death she thinks she caused. Will she discover the only that the only to redemption or perhaps the only punishment is to keep on living? Question mark. Fondly, me. Um. So this is the one that breaks rules, um, and I thought it was a it did it well, and then I read the. Um, the first page. I, I talked to the writer and I read her, the first couple of pages of this. What I wanted to do with this query was have it grab you by tender flesh immediately and then just keep on being like unrelenting in this style. But the book doesn't sound like that, which is yeah. a big problem. I, I, wish I, I wish it did, but she had to read the entire thing and that's just not happening. Um, yeah. Because you can see how it just starts out really, really strong. Right. Um, a liar, she a lover anyway. You don't find many references to you in the body of a career like that. It's a big risk. I thought it worked well, but I we have to dial it down some because um, the book just doesn't sound like that. Um, yeah, yeah. 
you, you have, have the best query, but if the pages don't match, you're not. I've done that. I've, I've edited the queries so that like, you so that you know that the query. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a lot of the reason I often um, end up rewording using their own um, words. Yeah. Uh, because that way it will still reflect the their style, their writing style. Yeah. But the work people I, I work with like what I do. Um, right. But so. getting in the door only goes so far if the book. Yeah. Doesn't and like that's that. why I look at the pages now, too. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. Okay. See, this starts out much stronger. The characterization is really clear. And this character seems like she doesn't go places and do things. That's not the character that was a problem. We, she we dropped like in that. the name of the institution. The two weeks they at. Yeah, we don't need that. The institution. Because we're trying to minimize names. That's why I took it out. Yeah. yeah. Too bad I can't spell. Uh, this is because we're saying this twice. Uh, so So is this manic episode, are the demons or the manic episode separate incidents? Um, and if so does she realize that she still wants the, the old boyfriend while she's in the hospital? It, it reads like it's while she's in the hospital. That's so I think, I think that's, you know, Amber, when you're hospitalized, they yeah. usually have you do therapy. Okay, the demons are set. Okay, Amber is. Let me give her the link to this thing so that she can actually tell us what's going on here because she's messaging me on Facebook, which is not the most uh, optimal. Uh, not the optimal reason. Okay, so she's telling me that demons are um, separate thing. Okay. Right, that's good that's to good to know because I can't tell. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, she says that the character gets sassier, but that's, I mean, that's great. But if the beginning of the book isn't sassy, we can't have it be this, you know, Grabbing thing. Okay, this is a thing. Let me show you this. Okay, after she and blah blah blah, she. Okay, the after here tells you something big is about to happen because this is just precedent. Okay, so it's she and David called You uh, know, I think. I think specifying who called it quits might help oh, yeah, with. With the guilt, you know, yeah. no matter who it is, we know knowing who called if, if it's not mutual, you'll have a better yeah. reason, I think. For I, the guilt. I corrected that in a romance a couple weeks ago, yeah. Um, does he dump her because of the cheating and that's her fault? I think she dumped or, him. or does she dump him because she's been cheating on him and that's why what sends you know triggers his his probable suicide? So I, I learned oh, wow. her that the um well go okay go into the it's so hard to see what you didn't put in there when you know the story front and backwards. Is he jumps to here? Okay. And starts the relationship. Uh, dating whoever else. This is more active and actually. I I think it was her first manic. Ep well, I I guess the lying and the cheating is kind of okay. She dumped him because of his depression. Okay. She got in the chat. You are you okay? I should. Narrow this way, this way. And see. she, she just couldn't handle his pain. Oh, there you go. There she is. All right, good, good, good. You're in there now. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. do that, and now I can see you. Okay, he jumps David because he's. Okay. 
hello. And this is just placeholder language. In reality, the writer would be saying, yes, this is, I like this, or no, I don't, which is, you know, just um, getting wording in there to establish a, a concept. Yeah. So, uh, so it is. Let's say something else. And I'm really here to this. Yeah, she's hospitalized. I'm slightly curious if the immediately starting a new relationship um, you know? is part of the manic, like on the rebound kind of spirals up into, um, or if like the new relationship energy, because it's they're, they're clicking so well, is what triggers yeah. You know? She's still planning for her first love. Oh, it was her first manic episode that put her in diagnosed, like severe so enough to, is, to okay. have impacted her life. Um, Can you? I, I'm I'm too confused right okay. now. Okay, the new so the manic issues and the demons are the same thing now. Is that what we're saying? Uh, if you know what she's saying, please go ahead because I'm lost. Um, more. That's again telegraphing, but whatever, it's fine for now. Um, apparently, no, this is telegraphing too. Um. Do we have any specifics of the manic episode? Is she spending out of control? Is she acting out? Is she being promiscuous? I'm trying to figure out what yeah. sort of manic. Is she picking uh, fights? Is she not sleeping for five days and organizing her sock drawer? Uh, showing the, because um, what we have now is sort of like a, um, it reads more, Ah, uh, okay. Um, like diagnostic terms than like specific aspects of mental health imbalance coming out. Um, stops. Or actually, she doesn't. This is. Uh, so you, uh, Lee, you're saying that the character. Um, becomes incoherent or what? I believe so. Okay, and she... Yeah. I think that's what we're saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Pressured mm -hmm. yeah. speech Pressured paranoia and delusions of grandeur. Okay, I show the delusions because that's going to be exciting to an agent. Uh, having, so I haven't had those, like, I've been there. Um, Um, just make sure it's not apply all this, make sure it's actually things happening, not just you know, she experiences this, this, and this, like show the delusions, because that can be a dramatic yeah. problem. Um, does new new partner bring her in, or does she go there in uh, desperation? She, she leaves the patient. 
created any of that. This language to me is a little outside of the um, the world we built. Um, so you have to be careful what kind of um, languages and stuff like this. Um, we don't have to have the genre here. Um, but when I see science words like that, um, I think this may be science fiction. Um, other people are less concerned about it. I just like to keep within the sort of um, word family, well, well, family family's wrong word to use, but you know, not go straight too far from the, uh, like yeah. we've just had a bunch of mental health stuff. We don't need a universe right. there. Um, what, what about something like um, uh, therapy sessions trigger um, childhood traumas? She's hospitalized. Oh. Or, you know, childhood traumas resurface as um, in the therapy during therapy sessions. If that's what it is, that's you know, it's just you know not clear from the query. Um, and again, something that might get tossed in a, a later um, draft. Uh, okay. But we need to know it so that we have the language of a full. Um, was this the query we did last week where we had yes. the whole thing? Okay, that's, I'm. There we go. Specifics always help differentiate between um, similar stories in the similar genres. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, Lee said yes. Perfect on the sessions. They're they're triggering. So, um, yeah, go ahead and write that in. Childhood um, traumas. As she undergoes therapy, blah blah blah. Her. Like he after each um forced therapy session. Eh? She un not I like mine. <laughs> Childhood traumas bombard her psyche after each forced therapy session. Alright, if that's what she likes, then do it. But you know, it, it doesn't, yeah, it, it can be. I just say bombard because bombard is the word. Mirage, I think, is the you can bombard. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, either way, frankly, than that, I mean, mirage and bombard are pretty awesome verbs to use there. Thank you for the strong verb there. Morgan. I tried. I, I, I channeled my you. inner Patrick. I you. Patrick. Okay. <laughs> you did. <laughs> After I surprised you with a passive verb, which I can use, I just hate them mostly. Right, right, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm trying to make it more active. Yes, it is. Learned it from watching you. First love. Okay, I got a colon here. Set up his. There we go. Plans of name is Um. Childhood. High school boyfriend doesn't come up again, so I don't know if we need him. We need the name. Yeah, we can house it. So, okay. and then we don't need this either. Yeah, because we've already very well established David yep. in the. Okay. Yeah. So. She. Uh, we need to re. re uh, we need to import that language from before. Uh, Morgan, what am I going to say about this question mark? Oh, rhetorical questions are usually contraindicated. So how do we reword that? 
to be a literally snake. anything in the world. Could um, involve ducks would still be better. Nathan yeah. doesn't want you to ask a question. Um, to pose a situation. It's a decision. Um, okay. And decide if redemption or punishment can be found. Um, um, decide whether to uh, Is this even earn Where was the guilt? Come on. Or something like uh, that, maybe. I don't know. I mean it's um I'm, I'm all the ducks, yes. yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> many, many ducks. Um does that stick sentence work, Lee? Maybe. Because to me, we really only have one plot uh, thread uh, thread here, plot thread, which is her mental health. Um, mm, he realizes, okay, that's placeholder. That's fine. Um, the problem here, okay, we have lost Liar and the Cheat, hardcore. We haven't seen this since the opening lines. And they're great, but if we don't see them throughout, um, then you've just introduced a thing and then it just disappears, which is useless. It, and actually, kind of productive, frankly. Because the agent is looking for someone who's lying and cheat. That could be a fun anti hero to read, really. Um, Dexter, the, 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 the HBO series and the books by uh, Jeff, uh, whatever his name is. Um, that guy is, is not a good person um, in a lot of ways, but it's fun. Um, if this, if she's allowed to cheat, show that and then keep going with it. But I mean, it's, right now, we just dropped that completely. So either, um, either. Ah, okay. Uh, Lee suggests bring it back okay. to the same right. to a new partner. Okay. Um, so I have a little bit of guilt. Or she's bipolar, so she's not always one thing. Um, well, then we still need to see that as a thing. Like, that's I've built it into the query, frankly. Um, so I, wanted, uh, I don't understand. I don't, I don't see how to bring it. So I went in a totally different direction. Look, look at how I, I went with um, Now okay. she must decide if redemption can be found by suffering through the guilt, her past traumas, and fighting her own brain chemistry, or if death is the right punishment. So first up, you have like 93 nouns in there. Um, oh, I love you, Morgan, <laughs> but <laughs> redemption, suffering, trauma, <laughs> Chemistry, death. Point. I mean, this is like a, this is almost my list of, of nouns in my from my intensive. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm I'm laughing with you, just silent right now. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing we're on the same Patrick. room. I broke Patrick. I broke Patrick. If we were in the same room, would you have thrown something at me just then? No, and no, the of course not. <laughs> no, that's good. I would have thrown something at me. Um, I, I thought you would have thrown something at me for. No, I don't want to. No, now. because I have nothing nearby that would. Uh, I don't want to throw a peanut shell at you. I don't want to throw wet fruit at you because that'd be gross. I've got a um, lot of cat toys right here. I don't want to get. That might get the cat interested in me, which is a bad <laughs> thing. Bad, bad thing. Um, okay, so she wants Lee wants us to have the, the stakes be like, will she do? The, you know, will she kill the next boyfriend she has or whatever? Right, right. Um, right. Hello, Jessica. Lee, are we correct? Oh, that? okay. She's okay. she's not um, suicidal. So okay, so Lee that. is the, is the stakes about her like getting with some other boy and then um, like dumping him and him being oh. feeling awful and killing himself? Is that the the stakes now? Because that's. I don't like that as much, honestly. Um, can you hear me chewing? Not really. Good. No, I, I don't think we need the end. Uh, Just the first start of the book, not the end. I don't care about the end. Don't tell me the end. 
I don't want more details than I have. I just need to know if the stakes are like um, boyfriend killing or not. Because um, once I have the stakes, I can weave from beginning to end. Um, but I can't right now because I don't know. Um, that's not a decision. That's her or making the decision. Let's see. Okay, so. Okay, so she has to decide between a new life, a career, and a boyfriend, or punishing herself how. And then, if we are getting away from her being a liar and a cheat, we need to see that in her rejecting it or in her being honest. Okay, what was she doing that was cheating? I didn't see that. I assume sleeping with someone else. I don't know. It's not in the career. I don't think I've seen that in, the, in, the, in any previous. We've I've worked like six versions of this thing. Um, um, so... Which sounds better to you, or accept that she will always destroy her partners or her relationships? I would go partners, but that's not me. Yeah. Okay. This is ten thousand dollars. That's cool. All right. Uh, partners and yeah, oh, relationships. All right, there we go. Then. Okay. okay. That's what it is then. All right. This is going to take a couple of drafts to get everything through because the uh, we're going to need to see the lying and the cheating um, at some point, either that or the honesty of it. Um, <laughs> Lee's like oil and water, Patrick. Yeah, it's, I'm like that with a lot of people, though, is the thing. Um, okay. I don't, I've, I've stopped trying to um, be different yeah. because this, this works, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, so that's a draft of it. I would say it's going to take at least three more to get you where you want to be. Yeah, um, but I, I like the new direction. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to read it. I'm excited to hear how it's going to come out. So Laurel Lancaster is a liar and a cheat, but you'll love her anyway, just like her boyfriend David does. In fairness, he doesn't know she's a liar or a cheat, but Laurel has reasons for how she's turned out. She dumps David because she can't handle his constant torment, I think is not quite right. Um, after she starts dating someone else, she doesn't sleep for days, something delusions, and her language becomes incoherent. Her worried parents and new partner drag her to the hospital where she's committed for mania for two weeks. Childhood traumas bombard her psyche after each forced therapy session. She realizes she's still pining for her first love, her high school boyfriend. She leaves inpatient treatment and goes home, whatevs. Then she learns that David has died in a car, quote unquote, accident. She believes in her gut that he killed himself and she's the reason. Now she must decide if redemption can be found by suffering through the guilt, her past traumas and fighting her own brain chemistry or accept that she will always destroy her relationships. Okay. That's a good place to end with for that. We need stuff that's, I mean, yeah, that's a job. And honestly, we're not. We, uh, my goal with this stuff is never to get through the entire query and fix the entire yeah, thing. It of takes so. for me to fix a query with a writer it takes an hour at least. Yeah, it it um, usually takes between two and three back and forths. Yep. Um, unless um, they start going in another direction, in which case it's three or four stop, with a new one. I try to stop them. I'm like, no, 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 no stop, stop. We don't. I don't need what? ghosts in this thing about about dark mystics. I don't need. And that happened to me two nights ago. I was like, no, 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 no. It's the entire subplot. Delete, 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 don't because we have this thing. <laughs> we have this. <laughs> and it was this whole like, I had it simple. I took layers of plot away from it to get it out of this person who's fundamentally choosing between her light side and her dark side, which is great. It's a it's a very common theme in fantasy. You don't need to add ghosts to it. But the but the you know, agent, the pages find the ghosts and can have that stuff. But 
Lee says I love it, and thank you both. I'm Yay. happy you like it. Uh, can we? We're okay. getting there. We're can getting there. We, for the future, stick to this version of the query and not do something <laughs> unrelated with ducks. Eh, eh, eh. Caveat: unless you query it 15 times and you need to revamp. Even I, I st after file of form rejections. When people show me the query that they've sent 40 or 50 times or whatever it is, we no, keep the concept no. in. You just do it better. If if you're getting nothing after 10 to 15, it's time to revamp. Yes, revamp, not reconcept. No, no. A lot of times when I see, 90% of the time I see with, with queries, not yours, but with most queries, the stakes don't exist. Okay. Well, this is the reason think, that you, you keep the concept like this is a problem. Okay, what specifically is the problem? And then you tie it to the beginning and it's just, you have you, yeah. because they don't know what they're doing, honestly. Yeah. My, because my, this might drift is, towards synopsis if I rewrite it too many times instead of query, but I've always got my stakes in there. You do, yes. It's so. the reason that I wrote that document. The, the, um, let me throw it there in there for us. For people watching it, no, two people watching. Great. Okay, is it? I just see the same stuff in the ninety percent of the queries. Um, okay, let's go to. We have a, a new one now. Okay. Ten-year-old uh, slave Kylia wants to avenge her tribe burned down by their genocidal emperor. She disguises herself as a boy, as a boy named Conivore, to join the vessels. Men who serve the one God, the maker. Under their protection, she can gain the maker's power to control air and fire. Conovar not only takes comfort with her new family, but realizes in her fluidity, she prefers to be called he. Forced to stay within the vessel's garrison, Conovar struggles to follow the maker's code of putting him before his people. His beliefs change when learning the vessel commander who took him in is concealing the existence of other gods. At 19, Conovar isn't daunted when learning his true identity may get him killed during the initiation in becoming a vessel. The Oracle says Conovar's fate is bound to others. When the God of Chaos offers Conovar the power he's been seeking, he must choose between giving up revenge to be with his family or becoming what the vessels abolish. Vices of a Pagan is a 142,000 word young adult fantasy. This novel will appeal to the fans of Andre Dumas's Three Musketeers and Bioware's Dragon Age. It is a BIPOC, uh, B-I-P-O-C, uh, and own voices novel for bisexuality, but not gender fluidity. Vices of a Pagan is the first in a duology. I am a proud foster failure, taking in cats to make up for the dogs I grew up with. Like Conovar, I can be found accidentally domesticating wild animals in New York City from cats to raccoons. As per your submission guidelines, the first 10 pages can be found in this email. Thank you for your time. Wow, that sounds like a great story that is a little too long. Um, and... I can see that, you know, it's a little wordy, but I think we can get there. I know how to do this exactly because I taught this last weekend. Awesome. These exact things. Okay, we've got nonlinear, which I didn't teach you, but I, it, it's, I, I see it. I mean, it's it's see linear. It. It's totally linear. It, oh, you, oh, really? Oh, you think so? That's interesting. Um, okay, so you think this is linear? You think that's linear, Morgan? No, no. Okay, Sorry. then. Thank the you. Sentences right. are linear. <laughs> Revel is here and watching. Says, yeah. um, uh, definitely long. Thankfully, you're looking at the second draft. Improved greatly. <laughs> and is this linear, Morgan? Say again. Uh, okay, okay. You're Thank right. You. I'm wrong. Thank you. The reason I. See, I meant the I, sentences. The story is told these, in the right order. I, these, I figure out better, like words that, you know. Right. Um, I didn't say all the sentences were in the, the sentence itself yeah. internally. I just meant the story is in, in order between yeah. the sentences. Like it, we don't have, well, we don't have, which is good. If we don't have an input at the beginning. Right. It's like, this is a, you know, it's a long lost whatever thing that you don't see until like chapter seven. 
which just destroys me because I spent all this time, you know, refining things and making, and then, oh, this is supposed to be down, 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 down. I have to just read, yeah. you know, do everything. Um, it starts off with the stakes. I love it. The goal. Well, the other big thing here is we have a whole bunch of agency that has been destroyed by nouns. Um, nouns don't destroy anything. <laughs> I'm a noun. You're a yeah. noun. Yes, you I know. are a noun. <laughs> you noun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Um, this entire thing. That tells us the target. When Kilea was a baby or whatever. The uh, emperor burned down her tribe. X years later, she now a slave or whatever it's going to be because I, I can't tell. Uh, is determined to avenge. Do you think that's better, conceptually? Yeah, but it's more words, so I understand that's why fine. I'm trying to. That's fine, because we have just turned down this burned down blah, 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 which was, I'm not sure it's an adjective, but I know that it could have a whole ton more agency, could hit it a lot harder, okay? And we've turned it into an, it's something that happens, okay? So we've got this 10-year-old kid who has only ever, within the within what we can tell, all that this girl has known is pain, right? So she's Aww. boiling with rage. Rebel's okay? been and listening she, to you too much. It says, it breaks up the noun, so I like it. See? I kept the, the avenge is a great verb to use, okay? Um, but also it's nonlinear because we have the burning that happens way before the avenging desire happens. Sure, um, sure. Okay. So she disguises herself. Great. Okay, it's kind of our boy to join the vessels. Okay, we're getting away from the emperor, and we're getting away from the vengeance. I don't understand. I don't see what's in the world building here. What this? How is this? Con uh, uh, connected? She wants the power. And I have the power. Her? Okay, so she wants to be able to control air and fire, so she can do yes. what exactly? So she can avenge them. Great. That's the concept, but how is she gonna? Is she gonna like throw fireballs at somebody so she can invade I, whatever? Because right now, okay, we have we have kind of this is Kalea becoming carnivores. That's collect one collective noun. Okay, we have the emperor burning out her 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 family, her tribe, whatever thing. Okay, disguising yourself. Okay, vessels maker. The next two nouns do not are not clearly connected within this world building to the emperor. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So we need to connect them in specific world-building ways. Okay, so I'm gonna just, you know. You know, we don't have to know what the power is. We just have to know that it's magic to challenge the emperor. Enough power to. That'd be, be, okay, so she joins the vessel. Look, here's a concept for you. She joins the vessels so she can gain the power to control her and fire and burn the emperor to death. Okay, that would be a clear connection to the and emperor. De details are good, so fire, air, and fire. We we should, I guess, leave in. I'm okay. I mean, it, it, I don't want to delete anything at this point in, in terms of uh, yeah, detail. yeah, no, because we just don't know enough yet, frankly. Yeah, you know? and especially in fantasy, which in, in an epic fantasy, oh yeah. Um, I don't. I, I think that focusing on the specificity of the supernatural or air and fire, or whatever, is not the thing that I'm focused on right now. No, that's fine. Um, I need to see the connection between controlling air and fire and how she's going to avenge this guy. Um, yeah, yeah. If she's going to control air, so she floats him away somewhere. I don't. I don't know that how she's going to. You know, it's it's. You've introduced. So she, can, so she can pull the air from his lungs. What? Whatever. 
Well, we have we've introduced this character who wants to do something to the person, Aha. and then we've got the vessels on the maker. And what, 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 okay, that's nice. She's taking me away from the vengeance Once plot to you know, from to, oh, to, that's that's, that's his not gonna <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a new family, okay. The vessels, the vessels. In and she not only showed the comfort, she stopped crying herself to sleep, whatever. Uh, we need to see it. In a, in, we need to relate to her emotional restability, for example, whatever word you want to use, but we need to see her liking these people. Um, but I realize that her fluidity okay, that's fine, that's great. Um, for this, you'll want to get a reader for this who has use both those pronouns and been comfortable with whatever. I don't know what language to use for that, um, but, um, that, you know, there, and that's something where maybe you, you can query it um, and then the agency will pay for authentic. They're calling them not authenticity readers and not sensitivity readers because to convey that it's, you know, more about like this is how something would happen and not this is or isn't appropriate, basically. Um, okay, we need to know by who didn't know there was a garrison. We can... How, show it. There's a whole bunch of will building that we're telling. Linear. I, I love the idea of fire and air. I just need to see how specifically it's connected to whatever thing is happening. Um, if you could, she could go to a, a you know the International School of Jacks to do it. I don't care. I just need to know what, how you know that it's connected to this you know event plot. Um, is she going to make fireballs on the Is she going to you know burn it with meat or whatever? I don't. That you know, there's lots of options, but. You have this girl who's seeking vengeance against this guy, and then she goes to join the vessels. I don't see a connection to the emperor. Because there's the one god that makes honestly connection is still, and then to control this stuff. Okay, what is she? How is she going to do it? We're getting away from the uh, the core plot here, to me. Um, but there's ways to you know fix that, which is what we're here for. Um, linear again. Another world building. What does he even mean? So maybe this is something about them dying or something. I don't know. Um, Okay, we need to build the family a lot more than we have now. I mean, to see him, carnivore, um, finding purpose and family with this stuff. The trope has found family, and so you'll want to build up. Um, good to know. Um, and then that is bad. That and that. Okay. So to make so to make this the vessels into one paragraph because the vessels is basically like the new emotional and physical setting for this book at this point. Um, so we need to establish, we need to see, we need to experience kind of or in this family, enjoying things. I would say um, show something maybe in the first paragraph that Kilea um, struggles with emotionally or whatever because she doesn't have a family and then show kind of or being able to do that stuff with the vessels basically. That way you're, you're showing that growth in the family and emotional connection. And then that, and then when we do that, we, you get a family here that we actually care about, right? Because right now, we have a bunch of telling about this stuff. We don't experience the character growing within a new family setting. Does that make sense? I thought so, but I'm, I'm not the one you're communicating with. Yeah, that's why I didn't ask you. Um, <laughs> okay, I don't know. Okay, that's right, yeah. Okay, I, so. I, I am definitely worried at that word count, though. Anything yeah. over 120, especially for a debut adult fantasy, 
is mm -hmm. usually an automatic disqualification. Mm -hmm. So I really, really worry, especially as you say, it's part of a duology yeah. um, that can't stand alone. A yeah. lot of agents are going to reject it just based on that. So, so that, um, Rebel, would it be easier for you to trim it by 20% or would it be easier if you just split it? Because I, I don't think the, there's another option, honestly. Um, I'd, ha I'd have to see. Let me see if I have more of this. Uh, what is the name here? Okay. I mean, I, do I need to okay. delete it? Is, is it honestly a standalone with serious potential? You can't. It doesn't matter if it's standalone. At 142, you have to either split it or. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those are two separate issues. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I need to take this out because I don't have. I'm not trying to out someone. Um, okay, that's. Dad, that's 138 is, 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 is still. I mean, you're talking about how many more pounds that you, that you still have to cut a ton. Um, yeah. What, 120 for adult fantasy. I'm really, really worried YA. It's, it's just going to be a deal breaker. Right, they cleared at 19. Why are we still in YA? Uh, YA is usually teenager coming of age. Okay. Um, does this read like YA to you? Uh, or does it read adult? It can. It can. Okay. Right. YA sometimes, I, it depends. The difference between adult coming of age and mm -hmm. YA is typically, you know, how much they do on their own mm -hmm. and how much of it is them coming into their own. Mm -hmm. um, just where, them into YA. Yeah. Just okay, that's fine. I just, okay. Um, I can tell, I, I, having done this, I can tell you, uh, Revel, um, if you give me like three pages, I can tell you instantly if you can just chop, 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 chop words. Or if you need to split the book, because I just I've been chopping things for a long time. Because um, some people overwrite. I've seen a lot of overwriting this week. Um, it just, you can I, tell me. I think if you're willing to gut your novel, you start with her at ten and you bring her up to nineteen, and I think you can trim that down with maybe some flashbacks maybe starting at the 19 with, you know, her, him, sorry, um, hanging out with faux dad and talking mm -hmm. about the gods or whatever, um, and talking about the initiation and then flashback to why he's there and what he yeah. started with. Um, if, if you really, really want to trim that 20K to get you down there. Um, yeah, cutting scenes a lot easier than cutting uh, yeah. language. But um, I mean, I, I'm not the best with flashbacks. I, I don't. So, okay. Um, Rebel says, I have the chapters dated, so it could be taken out linear to do that's flashbacks. Good. That is like, I mean, all I know is what's in your query. I haven't yeah. read it, obviously. But in instinctively, that's, that's probably the only way you're going to get it down. Unless it's just massive. The other online. option, publish, mm -hmm. self-publish, and screw the the um, default. Um, yeah, you can do for publishing. Right? As far as I've heard. All right, um, so we've got that. Three Musketeers is a huge comp, but Dragon Age, I think, makes it tolerable. Um, I would like to see something more recent than um, and in English or something. Um, than iconic and from a different century. But um, I, I definitely right. do like automatically like pick up on the parallels, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imprisoned, enslaved, it, revenge. It's kind of Monte Cristo, this uh, set of the same concept of revenge. But that's again the same uh, forever going yeah. iconic. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's go. All right. Uh, do you want to touch the synopsis since this might be gutted and <laughs> or such? Or. Excuse me. Okay. Um, um, I, I do want to um, talk about I'm a proud foster failure. When you first wrote that, 
I thought you were alluding to the fact someone had fostered to adopt you as a person and you'd gone back into the system. And then as I read that, I realized you foster cats and dogs and then you keep them. Um, but because the story is about a foster father, you you are probably going to want to clarify because people who are unfamiliar with the term foster failure may not pick up on that. Yeah. So, okay. Not sure either. Yeah. Sorry, I love it. And I have friends who foster and I knew what that was, but because of the foster family situation uh -huh. and the fact you talked about how own voices it was, um, my, my first thought was foster families and not pets. So, and <laughs> bios are probably going to be harder than cutting a few yeah. thousand words. Yeah. Bios, yeah, they don't have to be, but yeah. Mm. So you don't have to say as per submission guidelines, if you enter and you can follow directions, they assume you follow directions. Um, if you can't, you shouldn't be querying. So we didn't trim this one too much other than that first. Uh, yeah, but this is really, I mean, you have to do a lot to that anyway. So yeah, so, the goal but, with that query was not to trim, it was, it was to reshape more. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so um, the, the new first paragraph is when Kylia was a baby or whatever, the emperor burned down her tribe. So many years later, she, now a slave, is determined to avenge them. She disguises herself as Conobar, a boy, to join the vessels, men who serve the one god, the maker. Under their protection, she can gain the maker's power to control air and fire, to pull the air from the emperor's lungs and burn his palaces. <laughs> The vessels take Conobar in, and she not only is shown that family can be awesome, but realizes in her fluidity, she prefers to be called he. Um, and then we basically kept it. So um, uh, I'm just going to mark fix here. Mm. So, and, as, uh, and we ditched the submission guidelines line. OK. Yeah, it's a bunch of concept things. Um, this is going to take, I would guess, at least four more drafts to get it to a good place. But once you get it, get it there, it's great. And then again, the issue with the word count. Um, yeah. I have fun with that because that's not <laughs> that's not a thing I provide. That would make a lot of <laughs> a professional book editor, maybe me, no. I, I can tweak some bios. A bio, yeah, that's bios easy. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, I do, I tweak bios every day. It's yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But the word count is going to be death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, As, especially if it's YA. So, um, okay, we got the synopsis. Woohoo! A young girl escapes slavery and finds herself in the presence of Vessel Commander Oric. She rejects his offer of protection at first because the vessel failed to stop the genocide that resulted in her enslavement. Forced to choose between returning to the slaver who experimented on her, running away alone, or and Oric. She takes the path that would strengthen herself. Under Oryx's protection, he confines her to his quarters in the Wolford garrison for two years. He only allows her to explore the rest of the garrison as long as she pretends to be a boy named Conobar. With her new identity, she finds comfort and changes her titles to he. Conobar works as the stable boy while training to be a vessel. He plots how to confront the Jerusalem emperor who caused the genocide despite whoever assassinates an emperor is cursed by the maker with instant death. Unable to leave the garrison, he befriends the vessels by stealing wine from the kitchen and assisting them with uh, pranks against the trainees. Becoming a vessel for their ability to manipulate air and fire is kind of our best chance at having the power to take revenge. Orc warns him that no woman has passed the initiation in decades, but Conovar isn't deterred. Conovar's values change when he witnesses what happens to a vessel who breaks the code forbidding relationships. He tries to intervene in the hanging, but is punished for trying to stop it. Without Oryx's knowledge, Conovar sneaks out of the garrison for a doctor in the city. He meets Evelyn, a doctor and prostitute. He, she helps Conovar understand not only his fluidity in gender, but information Oryx has been holding from him. 
He learns about the four pagan gods that reincarnate and previously fought against the maker, the gods the vessel swore to serve. Evelyn presents Conovar with the option of taking enhancements to appear more masculine, which he agrees to. When Conovar is 19, he meets Dorian, the new swordmaster, and Jasper, his brother and trainee. What Jasper doesn't know is the woman he once instantly fell in love with was Conovar in a dress. Jasper and Conovar quickly become rivals fighting for Dorian's attention. Conovar finally confronts Oric about his secrecy, hiding the truth from him. Oric admits his fate is to raise a child, and that child would serve his punishment. He believes Conovar is the reincarnation of the god of chaos, and becoming a vessel would expose him. He held back Conovar to delay his greatest fear, losing him. Accepting his mistakes, Oric allows him to join the initiation. Proving his talents, Conovar not only survives the first part of the initiation by defeating cursed beasts called Demicore, but also saves Jasper and another trainee. He treats Jasper's wounds by using his blood altered by his former owner to become a cure for the venom. In doing so, he exposes his identity to Dorian. Conover barely survives the final part of the initiation. Instead of becoming a Wolfordian vessel, he is forced to join the brothers as a Skystadian vessel. Yeah. On their way to the Skystadian, they encounter bounty hunters on the slave route. The vessels defeat him but can't finish their mission due to their injuries. Conover and Dorian come back days later to find new slaves. Conovar sneaks off to fight the hunters alone until a group of demi help him. They speak to him, demanding the life of a survivor or Dorian his payment. He gives up a survivor. Conovar and Dorian take the rescue to a temple. They plan an infiltration and ambush the slave's route in point. Conovar is hesitant to be bait when he realizes its former owner nervous. He speaks to the oracle. She tells him he is the servant of the god of chaos, bound to those who serve, those who pray to Zim an immortal if the god revives him. His powers include being an empath and speaking to Demicor. At the end of the slave route, Conovor kills his former owner as the goddess Chaos possesses him. A vessel kills Conovor to stop his rampage. Dorian finds Conovor day, four days later. He admits he brought him to Skystead to protect Jasper the heir to the Skysteadian throne. Dorian sworn to an oath that would protect him from the emperor's curse plans to assassinate the Skystedian emperor for killing their mother. Back in Skystead, Oric confesses he was once a slaver. Conovar, upset by his deceit, sends him back to Wolford and cuts contact with him. Conovar plots with the vessels to kill the Skystedian emperor. Growing closer to Dorian, Conovar asks him if their relationship is something to pursue after Jasper becomes emperor. Dorian declines. Wah, wah, wah. The day before the assassination, Conover learns Dorian won't survive the Emperor's curse. Horrified by a suicide plan and with no time to find the God of Chaos, Conover teams up with Jasper to save Dorian, his brother. Conover lies to everyone that the God of Chaos will revive him. Conover doesn't survive. But didn't he already die twice? Okay. Dorian brings Conover's body back to the temple. <laughs> Conover is revived by the God of Chaos. With everyone's prayers answered, Conovar returns to Wolford. Under the identity of a woman, he becomes the first female vessel and lives happily with the men who raised him. He doesn't plan to stay for long as the gods, god of chaos's servant, Conovar, seeks to go after the Jerusalem emperor who started it all. Wah, wah, wah. Whew, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, I heard some things there that I could fix. Right. I think the experiment yeah. then has to stay in because we have that thing with the venom later. Do we? Okay. Tell you. Part of the reason I did the full read through before I got into it. Yeah, that's. Yeah. The only option is really Auric. Rest of you have your character runs away in your book alone, lady. Well, yeah, her other yeah. option was to stay there Die. and till they purify <laughs> her to death. Yes, so. there's there's religious rituals. They would have seen them. Yeah, she would have been exposed. Plus or kill herself, you know. Eh, eh. I don't like the two asses in a row. 
as Conovar works as the stable boy. Okay. There you go. There we go. No. Mm. So are there emperor emperors for Wolford and Skystead? I think there's four of them, but I, those are the only two that we even need to mention. Do we need the wine detail or not? I don't think so. Okay. Just befriends the vessels. Boom. Helping them crank. The tra trainees, yeah. I don't know how many emperors you need yet. Um, Do we need to capitalize Jerusalem at its first mention? Do plate right places get cap locked? Yes, anything proper noun for use. Yep. Along with or yeah, or yeah. And vessel too. It's an incredibly annoying thing. When I am king, we won't have to do that, but <laughs> That's gonna be a bit, I'm a little busy. No, that's fine. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can even shorten this even more, uh, even though the maker, maker will kill him instantly. We need to. Okay, so the vessels. If if the vessel thing this burn fire bit, we need to move that up. I think, so that we have a clearer reason for her to join the vessels. Um, And then we also have, and this explains this, if we move the vessel up the and fire bit and the, the woman thing, that makes the, the uh, passing of the male thing uh, uh, clearer for uh, plot reasons. Did I add too many words by saying the Jerusalem Emperor? You can add however many words you want to. I can cut it later, it's fine. Okay. And as we, I think it was pretty clear tonight, we're not gonna, this isn't the, the final version of this thing. Yeah. This is just, Looking at stuff and and, and chopping. Also, Again, we love green, and red. green and pink are the, or green and fuchsia are the best colors. All right, um, Connor, this is a vessel. Watches. Instead of his quarters, I think it's in his garrison. Trying to. Code is fielding another world building alley. We did introduce before. Um, A whole bunch of world building uh, that just needs to get happen earlier. Um, uh, vessel, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, so, these paragraphs um, need to swap. Then do it. Because he befriends the vessels. Well, I think it's stuff like going to editing mode. You don't suggest me editing and then switch them and then revert back to suggestion. Okay, yeah, good idea. Yeah, because otherwise you're just gonna, you know, everything's gonna die. Yeah. Um, 
we've already established he can't leave the garrison. So. Huh? You know what that means? That means is he, is Conover sneaking out to see the doctor? To fetch. Oh yeah, no, to see, definitely. We don't need to do give anything yet. I'm, you know, this is not, you're not gonna get down to whatever like tonight, that's not the goal of this thing. The goal of this thing is to make it all make sense. Uh, it's chop where, where it's obviously choppable. Um, but like there's so much thing that is not linear that um that that's just you know the overarching thing to me. Also the nouns. Morgan, there's a grocery store near you. Um yeah. I know this because I used to give, live there. Um for her <laughs> and there's a sale on muffins this week. Oh nice. Yeah, I thought you might like that. That's what I've been eating, along with the fruit, which I'm now out of. I'm gonna get some more food. Yeah, I should sure. probably get some food. Let's let's take um a quick stretch and food break. <sighs>
So it looked to me like um, Rebel has a plan for cutting because I had an idea if she didn't, if she wanted one, which is to um, uh, chop it in half and then the um, the garrison, the, the bit where he tries to save the person being hanged, might make a good um, stake sentence. In terms of choosing a new fed family versus um, and the safety of that versus, you know, going alone again. But if uh, Rebels is going to do something else, it's, you know, it's the thing I saw. Anyway. Um, it sounds really promising. Yeah. I don't really care. I mean, it's such a words to me. But, um, Oh, when it said serve as his, uh, serve his punishment, I thought Orc oh, you see, thought it's, it's, that he he'd get off for it. Okay, I see. That's, yeah, go ahead. He's Rebel, you might be totally right. Rebel, let us know. By serve his punishment, does that mean Orc commits some crime and the kid gets the punishment? Or that the kid is the embodiment of some punishment. curse that punishes Orc? That makes more sense. I I think having us both read this helps demonstrate how imprecise wording can make two people think. Ah, okay. Thinks so that Connor right. is atonement. Atonement for what? I don't know. So I was right. Okay. I think that's what she said. Survives. Okay. Uh, it's all process language. The beasts and it's fun. Jesus, okay, I see that. Jesus. Okay, let's just, uh, okay, that's Jasper Husband. Does that matter?
to this. When we say expose him, does that mean expose Oric as someone raising, believing in other gods and wanting a vessel for them? Or does it mean expose Conovar as biologically, you know, uh, assigned female? Like that up here? Sorry, you may have been answering a different question, Ravel. Sorry, I, a I love his own as as a wording construct, but also uses his blood. I mean, it's Conover, but this way I think it's a little more obvious. It's not Jasper's. Yes, I don't know. <clears throat> we have. <laughs> this is nice. I, during this live stream, I'm not sure if it's a reason for it, but I'm going with it. Three people have asked to join, my, join the group, which is nice. Okay. I don't know if it's because of this or what, um, but that's, and, and it's not people I went after actively. Because um, when I was start, first starting out, I was you know, trying and trying, trying to get people, and it's been a little bit of work. Um, and those are names on our recognize, so that's nice. It could just be people on Twitter I interacted with. Um, that's, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. Um, as we march toward 250. See, uh, I I did not see this coming. Because I didn't know there was a Wolfordian or Sky Steady in anything to be. See, when I read a book, and it does happen occasionally, um, <laughs> I always assume the character's going to live, and it's a matter of how. Mm -hmm. And so seeing them die is like, ooh, they're willing to go there. But then, of course, it's going to, you know, they're going to revive a side of how again. Um, let's see here. How much do we have left? Not that much that we can get to just this thing. Um, okay. So I was going to do that on this. That's right. Let me find where Justice is. Uh, that's not it. 
that's not it. There it is. Okay, see anything? Okay. That's weird. That not confuse you? Which part? Instead of becoming a Wolfordian vessel, he becomes a Skystedian vessel. I, I didn't know even know Skystead existed at this point. So. Yeah. Instead of becoming a Wolfordian vessel in his home country, he is forced to join the brothers as a vessel for the neighboring empire of Skystead. I think, I think is what's going on. And then we can just say on their way, they encounter bounty hunters attack. <laughs> Where he learns it, maybe Rebel. I don't know. I'm, I'm fantasy. I just get lost immediately. It's. It's almost as bad when I read Faye stuff, which is just death to me. Um, On their way, slaver bounty hunters attack. The vessels defeat them, but are too injured to continue traveling. Say, return. Return instead of come back. Whatever. I mean. I'm not liking the slave plot line though. I mean Dor Conobar was a slave initially. Yeah. yeah. You might find that some agents do not want to uh, rip something that contains anything like this. Uh, I'm not sure what you do instead, though. I don't know the book well enough. I don't see much to cut for the rest, but that might just be because my editing pen is, uh, editing knife is dull. Um, it just, it has a whole lot of verbs and it doesn't have a lot of process language to me, but that's just me not really know, understanding the book that well, because it's too much happening. I get lost in sins. Queries I can do just fine. I don't, I mean, there's not too much plot, but syn synopsis just destroyed me. Okay. Right. Uh, I was gonna do that, but I'm gonna. Um, let's go down to Jess's things. We can get to it real quick. It's not going to take long. Sure. It's, yeah. it's Gabriel's big dinosaur, and she wants me to destroy it. So I will. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's also short. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry you said. End, 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 end. Just press control and you get there. Okay. Yep. Just the synopsis here. Two year old Gabriel and his best friend big dinosaur go everywhere together Ooh. they have such fun learning all about the world until the babysitter's new puppy chews big dinosaur's legs off Ooh. gabriel stops and holds his friend close he he still loves big dinosaur and he takes him everywhere 
the friends learned that with a little bit of help, a dinosaur can still do many of the things he enjoys without legs. He even learns how to hop on his tail like a kangaroo. Then one day, Big Dinosaur does not come home from the park with Gabriel. Gabriel and his mommy and daddy search everywhere, but Big Dinosaur is lost. Poor Gabriel cries for days, but refuses to give up hope that his best friend will come home. In the end, Gabriel receives a letter from Big Dinosaur that he has been at the toy hospital getting used to new legs, and he made some new friends while he was there who need a place to live. Can they come live with Big Dinosaur and Gabriel? Big Dinosaur and his new friends finally come home and will have many more adventures. Wait, do picture books get synopsis? Didn't you just send the whole thing? Um. I mean, it's not impossible to me if you think it happened. Um, I don't have the same resources that I oh, have. Oh, no. For... Jessica said we're looking at the wrong version. Mother. Okay. Cool. We can have a little intermission here while the... Yeah. We're good at intermissions. <laughs> yeah. We just had one. I got a second muffin. Mm. So. Yeah, they do. It's sometimes they just want. Um, I'll be back really, in a really, really minute. Yep. Um, just because if you can just DM it to me. Um, it's okay. What we have is I I took stuff from documents and put it in a thing called Query Helpline. So let me just grab the um the um, this and close the way you see what I mean. That's not the thing. It's 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 a document you don't have access to. Is is what I'm working because I cut, I pasted it from that. Um. Okay. Um. Open your synopsis. Gabriel's big dinosaur document. Yeah. Is this is it this thing here? Is this what we're supposed to be working? Oh, hold on, we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> okay, so this is the thing. That's a new one. I'll stick this. And this is interesting. All right, that's okay. So this is let's turn it on editing mode directly. Command that. Command that. Okay. Save things here. Age. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, 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 that's not familiar. I cut a picture book from nine seventy five to three something a month or two ago, and my it just it died. Everything died. Um, I might turn it into a chapter book. I'm not sure. Um, because I invented a fairy princess, uh, a fairy world. Um, but I cut two thirds of it to get it to length for a picture book. I'm not sure that was the best move. Okay, I either this one of these. This is. Telling. 
this is the part where you want to, you know, show me creative play because you have space. Um, but there's really not a lot to do left in here anyway. Um, not sure you need, oh, maybe it shows it. Uh, you don't, yeah, you don't need this. Um, because you have exploring the town, which tells me I can, you know, just those places. And again, a picture book is so small anyway. This is how it is, so just don't take that much. Um, so the only thing I do here um, is uh, show because you have lots of space. Um, and also because some of the, like I said before, some of the kids who who read this book are going to be the ones who uh, have mobility issues, and you want to be specific, more at least more specific in showing the creative play that you can do while having legs that don't work. Or not, you know, ways that don't exist. Um, these are, you know, situation is. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Silent and. Okay. Okay. All right. Where is more? Okay, I see that's right then. Okay, let's do down to. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Jess, did you do anything else, or is that it for tonight? Okay, cool. Hope that helps. Uh, let me. Um, I'll just put this let me do it back in there for you because. Uh, will that even translate? No, will not. Um, I will uh, give you access to this thing um, because if I. Let me see if this is going to do it. Okay, good, I can't see. All right. Do I have your email? Good from there. I do have it. I just don't know. Okay, yeah. And then it's grab your um your things at the bottom. I just didn't want to show the uh, the email um, live because it's yours. So um, that should uh, just skip to the end and then copy and paste it. Uh, there's not much there though. It's just I mean, because picture books and are so tiny, um, and you really can't um, write to a length that requires massive chopping. If I had to, I could, but. Uh, now we get, um, okay, did not get, we're not going to get all this, this is 10 pages, oh god, this is going to be, I'm so backed up right now, <laughs> oh god, the line to see me is, is two days long, yep, happy to, and it was tiny too, which I like, because the synopsis just destroyed me, a thousand words of fantasy synopsis is just absolute hell, oh god.
Now this is a query that I need to write. Okay, we're gonna eat back yet. No, you're not. Am I? No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. All right, uh, let's start on this thing. Corey, I'm just gonna editing mode here. I'm 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 boring with that one, right? Um, if you do that, <laughs> uh, I will direct you to my synopsis help document. <laughs> See, I, which is funny because I've written the, I've written queries so that I can avoid writing the book because I have to, I have to get the idea out of my head. <laughs> yes, all that just have a solid paragraph of all characters, names of characters. <laughs> they go to this place. It's incredibly long now, and then, and then. Just have just have no verb except for is and has and was. <laughs> it really is going to be that bad. <laughs> just have like, like half a line of process verb language. They go to a place that has this stuff and, and do a thing and then discover the blah 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 blah. blah. I know if you did, if you do that to me, I'll just press Control A and then just delete it all. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I get high, is the thing I get high off this stuff. I don't know if I told you that, but like queries, uh, particularly, um, I get high off those things. It's like a drug to me. <laughs> yeah. I live. You missed um, just threatening. Um, just look at the chat. It's hilarious. <laughs> A thousand <laughs> word synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> We'd say there's one line that you're going to really love. I cut the manuscript in half. Appreciate that. Might not even write a fantasy. I'll just write the synopsis, extra nouns, and one time <laughs> characters. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be so nowny, 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 noun. <laughs> oh, so, oh, this is the purpose of the live stream. You help us, we make you miserable. You know I will. <laughs> I tried, but it looks like I saved the draft <laughs> in that last sentence. Oh, a thousand word fantasy synopsis with no words. <laughs> I'm sure there will be a ton of adverbs. You can, you can do it with some. Um, I mean, you could. Does it, it count all, if we put them in gerund phrases? You could just, you can have, you can, you can remember, you can just destroy all action by making it modifiers. Having blah, 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 blah. Mm, and passive, so passive. Well, <sighs> All right, uh, I'm uh, now to the um, control F core, and you'll see where I am. I'm writing the thing for this person. Where are we going? Control F Cora, C O R N. Ah, okay. Oh, hey, let me not do it on like the chat and instead do it on the document.
When 15-year-old Cora was a child, body parts had survived childhood illness that started. See, this was her. The first ah, okay. Yeah. Book title, Chimera Maid. Working title, 96,000. High, young adult high fantasy with found fantasy trope, YA slew burn, sexy. Cora Vimerio, Vimero, 15. Daughter of small, politically powerful, nasty, aristocratic family, ill through childhood, six years at healers with no memory, left weak and scarred, facing arranged marriage at 15. Feisty, won't give in without a fight. Inciting incident, runs away to an academy to find out if she can use magic, has two powerful elemental magics instead of only one unheard of. Teacher offers to help hide, stakes, Learn to use her power while keeping it secret long enough to reach mastery and freedom from relatives, but realizes that what she she's really looking for is a true family, the friends she's making on her journey. Must choose whether to trust these new people with her secrets and her heart or shut them out like her blood family taught her. Uh, what a character, not super important, but no, whatevs. Uh, Finn Destrin chooses to help Cora enter the academy and becomes her teacher for her second power and also the object of the Slurban romance. So, are you building a query yeah. from scratch? Yeah. Yes. It's easier than the anything got from Peter Words, honestly. Check this. This is no. the original query. <clears throat> and I'm done. The fastest query read ever, right, Patrick? It, see, the nice thing is this is not 300 words of, of, of telling with no stakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Now I want steak. Um, okay. Steak is delicious. Delicious. We can't have that, actually. Uh, 
this is exciting incident. No, it's still not. Are you creating a query or a synopsis? Query. Okay. Yeah. She can do it better than anyone else has. A, is it quite what was there? And B, is so tropastic. I don't think we want that line in there. What? Well, she can use it better than anyone else ever has. It's concept. Okay. Yeah, this is not a final draft. This is initial uh, yeah, thing. Clearly. There's stuff that I, just, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yet. Um, you see all the brackets I have there? Um, yep. Any one of those could be wrong. Um, I'm just doing as uh, good as I can. Um, The voice is not consistent, but the point here is that we have something that has stakes, it has a character, it has an inciting incident, and it builds tension. Um, from here, I would work with the writer to fill stuff out, get the voice right. There's lots of places where the you know the verbs are. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but this works because it keeps it deliberately shuts out massive levels of detail um, that you just don't need um, because you're sticking. This is fundamentally a story about a girl who has to decide what kind of person she wants to be. Okay, it's internal stakes. Um, set within, you can put this in a fantasy school, you can put it in a, you know, a gymnasium, wherever, the, the setting isn't the thing. Um, the magic world is fun, but ultimately this is teaching people how to decide what kind of people they want to be. Um, so the internal stakes are pretty clear. Um, it took, what, like five minutes to type that out? Yeah. Ten-ish, maybe? Yeah. Maybe ten-ish. And, and from here, you just, you know, uh, with the right, you go through it. With this type of thing, I would expect to take about an hour and a half, maybe an hour, to nail everything down and get um, a query that I would expect to get requests. Um, because it is a, at the age of the character is when you're heavily social and you're really deciding what you want to invest in emotionally. Um, and if you scroll down, you see that the stake sentence basically is what's there. Is um, hmm? what's up? Usually with kids oh. stuff, they say that, you know, you want the character just at the next stage for the group. So for YA, 15 feels maybe a little young. Like, I, I feel like the character should be like in the like 17 to 19 range. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it makes sense in the world. Um, but it's seen. just some, you know, kids like to read up. So middle mm -hmm. grade, you always want the kids just a little yeah. older. Um, so that might be an issue that you run into. I, you could even probably get away with 16, but 15 feels a little young. Maybe mm -hmm. they get married at 17. I, I don't know. I just know no, it no. might come up yeah. as an issue. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's that. Uh, um... Who's this that I forget? Uh, let me search. Nothing there for that. All right, that's cool. Uh, uh, let me search this way. I have to figure out how we wrote that for. I don't remember. I have my DMs are full of query stuff. Okay, that's the one. All right. I will tell her. I'll just pop it in there. Um, uh, give me a second to get this into our document. Uh, oh, not that. Okay. Open. Okay. 
And okay, there it is right there. Okay. Uh, next one is okay. That's that we're not working this in there. Okay, all right. This one, uh, queer erotica. A little bit of a jump. <laughs> Make sure I don't have anything here that. Uh, okay, yeah, we're good. It does not reveal any information that the author that the writer didn't want to. Um, reveal. Okay, good. Okay. Search something like that. I don't think I have one. Right okay, that's. They're trying to put a tagline in, but it's not quite parsing right. Um, about a two second. Yeah, you're just looking for. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's stable a little awkwardly, I think. Um, it's just the transition into it. I don't know that we need the open call language um, because it, it, I mean, you used to be an agent, I am so generally, yes. and that's going to go away for almost every yeah. other query. So let's just have that be good. Um, yeah. Now that's okay. Run the table settings is a thousand word. Uh, you know, I usually use queer, but it's you know whatever the first thing is that. So uh, Maybe we can go straight for. Hmm? I'm dropping the entire transition thing and. Oh uh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's sense. Oh, for those listening and not watching at home, uh, the original uh, first paragraph is, in response to your agency's open call, I am submitting my erotic LGBTQIA romance for your consideration. Run the table. Acceptance is uh, complete as a standalone at 79,000 words with serious potential, which tells that when an emotionally troubled by curious accepts an intersex dual virgin, both may become whole. 24-year-old Catherine Mose continues to support her family's business by setting up pool tables for professional billiard league tournaments. After a 12-hour drive, she settled into her hotel room before stepping out to a corner bar for a one-drink nightcap. Physically and emotionally scarred, she doles out her revenge against men, spotting four pool tables in the bar room. Her developed emotional defenses entice her to have some fun. In town for the same tournament, Styler, the Rife Man, Ross, the current national champion of the PBL, the one man Catherine fantasizes about beating on a pool table, stepped into the same bar. Ross spotting an attractive woman playing a sexual tease while hustling a game of pool was immediate annoyed. Hustling at pool was bad enough, but to be what he called, quote unquote, a table slut was absolutely disgusting. Learning that the wager on the table was a potential night of sex, Ross bribes her potential victim to drop out so he could step in. Upping the wager, Ross was determined to teach this sensuous tease a lesson. After letting her win, Ross stopped short of fully paying off the wager and left her sprawled out on a pool table wanting. Lesson delivered. Hurt by his walking away, but enamored with the man and a feeling she can't explain, Catherine wants to see him again and a chance at payback. In her attempt to her revulsion, she discovers Ross is intersex, born with the genitals of both sexes. Recovering from the initial revulsion, Catherine has a choice, pursue a relationship, accept his uniqueness, and claim his dual virginity, or lose the man she bonded with as an infant and now doesn't want to be without, unaware that his tender nature may reopen her heart to the love of family friends. Readers that enjoy Born Both an Intersex Life by Hil H Hida Valoria will find my story intriguingly mixed with Bared to You by Sylvia Day, both gender swapped. I currently have one contemporary romance novel to speak of, 
can come true, written and self-published to get my foot out of my mouth and just to prove I could. With no marketing or ed, but advertisement investment, sales have outperformed my expectations. But run the table acceptance is a serious endeavor with social meaning. Acceptance can heal all wounds. Thank you for your time and interest in my submission. A little long for a query. Yeah, 99 is a pitch and that's going to die. I, um, it's a very sensitive topic. So I'm just yeah. going to assume that you've done your homework and have had a sensitivity reader go through that. Um, yeah. And I don't, I mean, I don't know uh, yeah. a lot about this topic. The community yeah. is just so big and there are a lot of identities with it, which is great. But yeah. I, I don't know intersex yeah. at all. Um, and as a reminder, all queries need to be in present tense. Yep. So there were some tense slips in there. So. Um, the length, I think, is okay. Um, the I don't think we need That's adults a query? because I don't. No, the length of the book. Oh, oh the book. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, length of, the pitch length is two ninety nine, which is going to die. Because uh, if you have seventy nine thousand and you're cutting it to two three hundred for a pitch. That's trouble. Um, I don't think we need to say that it's it's the age range because it's erotica is not YA. Um, yeah. At least as far as I've seen. Um, Sorry, I was trying to do a word count, but um, the shared tab is over top of the word count yeah. bar. Yeah, so. Okay, support her. Okay, that's just going to do this. Uh, sets up pool tables. Is by curious an mm -hmm. identity or a description? I, I haven't I heard of this use as it. Okay. Um, I was unfamiliar with that. So. Yeah, I, 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 I had it a lot uh, starting about 20 years ago. Um, I was, it's just, I've seen it enough. Um, yeah. I'm not going to. You know, police that part of it. There's so much, so much more to do here. Right. Um, I mean, it's very easy to do from here. Settles. Not even, you don't need this. Uh, she goes out. And we need to see this earlier. Okay. Um, because we have it here, right there, and then we have it down here, right? Um, go scroll down in the document. Sure. See so right there too. Okay. Yeah. Pain part of this, and we need to see that pain at the beginning, um, because her identity in this, the pool thing, is an interesting thing, but it's more of a means to get to the um, the pain. I think. Uh, so I would go say show this at the beginning. And then we have another thing that I spots. Um, okay, if she's scarred, developed is not the word I would use to describe emotional defenses. Um, she's going to be more on guard, I think. Um, or she's going to want to self-sabotage by diving in emotionally so that she can get hurt and then reel from that. I don't know which yet um, because I don't know the character. But this is... Uh, Shall we replace developed with maladaptive? Mal yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, Ooh, that did not go well. I thought I had it highlighted. It really did not. I should have okay, this is vague. Uh, 
billiards. We need to know this earlier. Again, this is just not great exposition. Um, well, I it's it's a romance, so you've got the her her part and then his part. Yeah. Um, but we yeah we we haven't seen her fantasizing about beating him, and that does no. actually come back no. up. So maybe we can drop that part. Does it, do it, is it not come back up again? All right, well, in that case. Um, Other than the fact he's the champion and she wants to win. Wait, is she setting up the pool tables or is she went play? He's a, he's, he is the guy. He, okay. he definitely comes up again. He is the guy, yeah. Yeah. He, he discovers that uh, he's got all the parts, so to speak. Right. Um, which is a situation to be in. I'm not judging it whatsoever. It, it, um, this is just fatigue, not um, yeah. any sort of question about the, what is it, 1% uh, of, of queer people are intersex. I forget exactly the um, things you're talking about, like a very, very tiny segment of the population. Yeah. But when that happens, what you get is very little literature, aside from medical research stuff, um, catering to folks. Um, and when you don't see yourself on a shelf, bad things happen. Um, when I went looking for uh, comp titles for Brianna a couple years ago, I was looking for stuff that was I'm not a stuff that wasn't coming out stuff, and I looked at 72 books, and six of them were not coming out books. Everything else was comes out and is opposed, which it just no. We we have enough of those. So anyway, um, this was three years ago, and things are better now, but they're still uh, not great. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Here's the bar. Spots a attractive woman. <laughs> teasing. Teasing. Her opponent. Yeah. Uh, and obviously hustling. I would actually not use this at all. I think mean, we can just do it better. Um, but Yes, I'm going obvious. Hold on, I'm confused. Okay, so he lets her win. Yes. He leaves her sprawling on the pool table. So she wins. He, he gets. So is she trying to lose? 
or fight. No, 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 no. He throws the game, lets her win, and then stops just short of orgasm. I see. So he has to give her. All right, that makes more sense. Yeah. Um, I don't I can hit that's funny. Like I think maybe games. plays her own game. Do what you want. Um, there we go. After he, he lets her win, he plays her own game and leaves her sprawled out on a pool table wanting because she was being a tease. Uh, in the chat, Jessica said, we mentioned looking for comps a little bit ago. Why does it suck so much? Because it's hard? Because, because we don't there are 93 want million books out there. Because um, we don't want to find stuff exactly like ours because we're afraid, you know, that means it's been done. But it means there's a market for it. But also my to read pile is five years old. Um, because you're looking at books for a different reason from what you usually do. Yeah. You're looking yeah. at books because you want to read them. Um, versus because it's the business side of writing and the business side of writing is name one part of the business side of writing that you like. When they say exactly. yes, when they that's ask for more pages. No, no, that's not the business. That's, that's the, once, it, once you're already querying. Queries yes. people hate, synopses people hate, editing people don't like, uh, comps they don't like, maybe I mean, conferences. Editing can be fun, and I like conferences. <laughs> I love how um, full of energy your voice is. <laughs> Jessica Editing says, can be fun. I mean, yeah. I to say this, but <laughs> I, I mean, that's why I'm here. If I hated it, I wouldn't be doing it. Editing other people's stuff is a different thing, lady. Yeah. Um, Jessica said, I know there are conferences, but they're expensive. I want to go like an agent fair that's free for authors, except agents jobs are actually selling for the people they already have and bringing on new clients is usually outside of their work hours so well, they're already like, swamped um, with like thousands. And, and, and jessica faust we're talking about it and, and, and james said the querying is reading queries is like down 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 near the bottom of the list of things too because they don't get paid for it no um no. they they got out um Jessica wants to speed date agents. Well, they do have speed pitching at, at conferences. They do. They do. She um, she said those are expensive, and they are. I, um, I don't know. I have never. I have not yet spent a dollar on anything for writing. I have gone to conferences. You've um, done a lot of but, stuff. <laughs> but I I haven't paid for a writing class. I haven't paid yeah. for an agent session. I paid to attend the convention. Yeah. I didn't pay to have a writing specific thing. Yeah. So. I didn't even know the convention yet because how would I? <laughs> In your copious spare time, obviously. Yes, with all the energy I have. Well, Can there's been imagine? plenty that are virtual. Yeah, I, I, I did a DV pit last year. This year? Uh, this year. 
um, the, which was all virtual. The convention and, uh, that I worked um, the last two years that I'm now on the board for, mm -hmm. all of their virtual panels that um, the people signed off um, and didn't have any copyright issues are free online on YouTube. Uh -huh. If you want to see the panels. Yeah. It's not the same as like networking, but it is the same oh, content. Right. But right. most of the content has ended up on my blog. <laughs> Shocking no one. Yeah, that's see the thing. I don't like networking because I get into I can help you mode. And that's not the point of networking. Um, it depends who you're networking with. Are you networking with other writers? Or are you networking with editors and agents and publishers? See, I don't have any. I, I do this a lot. Yes. Um, three hours a night on average. Right. And we hit that hour now. Yeah. Which means I don't have a ton of time to refine my dinosaur book or my um, ABC book of mythical creatures or anything else. Yeah. And again, I sink into I can help you mode so easily that it's like, I could just be on Twitter doing this. It's not, I, mean, I wouldn't have to have pants on. Because I wear my pajamas unless I'm going somewhere important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really so, but. so Jessica asked, uh, which convention do I work? Um, I work um, the uh, I work for Balticon. It's Baltimore's um, regional uh, sci-fi and fantasy uh, literary convention. It's going to be in its 56th year this coming year. So it's been around for a while. Um, it's several thousand, but it's not like Dragon Con size. It's it's focus on writers, not necessarily media tie-in. Although we did have George R. R. Martin like four years ago. Um, but yeah, so, um, and it's not as pricey as professional conventions because it is a fan run convention. It's not a professional event. Um, there's a lot of fandom stuff. Um, there's, you know, who did it better, Marvel or DC? and stuff like that. There's gaming and anime rooms and my cat playing with a pen. Um, so yeah, so. Um, careful. So a rebel says I'm way too shy to consider conventions or networking. I think half the reason I hit so many panels when I'm at a convention is it gives me something to do. So I, I don't feel like I'm lost. Um, Jessica says, I edit resumes professionally and memoir like you do, sort of, uh, because I'm good at it and I enjoy it. I kind of fell into doing it and charging the people I help feels icky. Yeah, that's why I do queries for free. So the problem with not charging is that you're undervaluing the people who do charge. You are worth something. You no. You're working your time is worth something. I know. But and, um, okay, so the funny thing, I have I helped someone. I have not seen a whole lot of paid query editing results. Yeah. Um, I helped one person who had two paid critiques, and her query was an absolute disaster. It was there was no agency in it whatsoever. The first paragraph had six proper nouns, either of which is death. Who critiqued then, this mess? I know I didn't ask who did it because it, it would just I mean yeah, what would I do with yeah I understand you either go talk to the people which is gross or you don't in which case why do you have the yeah. information? Um, so I got her query got done did a synopsis down to a page uh, I did not look at her first page which I should have um, but she is now querying she got likes from uh, Pitmad so that was nice to see I helped her with the pitches too because it, she didn't have them she had the only one that she had that was what you might call good. Uh, was the rare exception to the uh, no stakes pitches, which I tend to uh, kill with fire. Um, I don't remember which one she got that I got her like, but she got a lot of likes. Um, I picked that, which is good. Um, but so I'm going to go pro after Pit Dark, um, which is next okay. month. Um, but I just like, I've seen so many people charge like practically no money. $10 for me for query help, I might as well do it for free because $10 with what I do would amount to about. Five is twenty percent of sixty is twelve minutes. Twelve minutes of help with me, honestly, for a process that takes two hours is a rounding error, frankly. Yeah. yeah. If I when I get done going with this stuff, I will be charged fifty an hour baseline uh, for most people at least. Um, or you know, 
50 if it's three rounds or fewer if you have to go more than kick it up a bracket. Yeah, I've been thinking about Patreon with some of the resources at least because like the guide I legitimately save you, you know, um, a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Four years of, of editing query and I have, I've, I've just, a lot of it is codifiable. The rest of it is just, you know, you know how to do this stuff. Right, um, right. Yeah. Jessica says, I charge if it, I felt it was merited, but I can't yeah. charge a survivor of civil childhood trauma to help tell their story. I just yeah. can't do it. Oh, that's that so rough. Good. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, that, 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 okay, so that's that. Um, but so the, the I, I feel that editing someone's childhood trauma memoir is basically helping them through therapy, and I mm -hmm. therapists get charged to help, or charged to help, you know? They get charged a lot, yeah. So there is value in what you do, and yeah. but I understand a lot of people who are doing memoir especially of that nature, don't necessarily have the funds, but people also value more and listen more to things that they pay for. If yeah. you give oh, it yeah. to, oh my gosh, cat. <laughs> yep. <sighs> if they have more, like people are, I've, when I've done that with people, um, they get more serious about the feedback. I mean, they listen more because I think if I'm paying this person, I better listen. And I have done a lot of query, not recently, but I have done work with query people where they ignore what I suggest. And it's like, if you're just gonna dismiss everything, why are we here? Yeah. Because you either trust me or right. you, like on a basic issue, like like verbs. Yeah. If somebody's listening to me on verbs, that I mean, that's honestly, that's the game because I wish you well finding someone else, but it's a fundamental aspect of communicating action, which is the point of it. A query. Yeah. Um, and and I was um my my ex-husband um was an amateur photographer and I told him he needed to start charging, otherwise he's undercutting people who are trying to make a living from it. Yeah. But you know, if you can get free that's almost as good, then you know, you're underrating yeah. pros and you're underrating yourself a lot of the time because yeah. you are almost there. One of the reasons that I don't uh, help people find agents specifically is that there's someone who does that um, and has whatever marginalized thing going on. I don't remember exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. To me, the work is incredibly easy. But if someone cannot do an office job, can't even tell it commute it because of whatever thing, then doing it for free, I'm basically killing that person frankly. Yeah. Uh, and like to me, charging five dollars per agent found is way too much money. But there are people who just get a mental block for that stuff. Um, anyway, when I go for it, it'll be 50 an hour with certain discounts, but I mean, I can do something many people can't do and it's a big pain point and I have like clear results. Um, I've gotten, I, I think I'm averaging one request a week from a new person I help for the past four months, so. Uh, okay, let's see. So we need to, the big things here with this query. Um, we need to, the verbs are not that huge a deal, frankly. Um, the the big thing to me is building the rifle, the the, the Styler Ross um, backstory with um, with Catherine. Um, because if we, we see down here the stakes, she bonded with him as an infant. I need to know that way earlier than at the stakes level, uh, sentence of the query. Um, I also need to understand more about this scarring, the, the, the men, the trauma, all that. Uh, I need to be more present in the query, especially at the end. Um, so there's there's a level of just weaving plot elements in that I'm not seeing here. Um, and it feels like, it's, it's distorted, frankly, um, because we need a continuity of uh, thematic elements building. Hi, honey, do you need help? Hold on, my three-year-old. <sighs> sure. <laughs> Thanks for blessing me. Uh, after this, I unfortunately am gonna have to drop. So.
Okay. You gotta get rid of you said? Um, I I gotta do my, my Wednesday night blog post for uh, that and and vlog post and then set my alarm for eight thirty. Owie, God. Eight twenty five. Sorry, I need to be on online by eight thirty. Uh, that's yeah, that's a good yeah. But I didn't so, want to stop in the middle of this one, yeah, obviously. Fine. It's it's no, such so a okay. we still have this stuff, that's fine. I might do it tomorrow morning, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I gotta get this to him, or this person rather. I don't know what the gender is. Or I don't know the pronouns. Uh, uh, okay. Hita Valoria. Okay, I what's up? pronunciation. Okay, yeah. I I looked at the thing just to make sure that. Oh, hello, Heather. Um. Yeah, we, we're go, we're going soon because Morgan has to get back to things that aren't me editing stuff. <laughs> You you can definitely rewind and watch watch the rest of it. Many but, many um, hours of me burning things to oh, the ground. Um, should, should I read the new version? I don't think you did, uh, but we we don't have. I didn't put the stuff at the, in in every all the places. Um, I just I'm I'm I, I, I've got nothing left. No, honestly. that's fine. That's fine. This one's um, only have three quarters done, and I think we need a little more sleep before we can polish it up. And by we, I mean him, because I've got a day job and a lot of other I stuff. I do too, but I, I, I should sneak away a little bit. I've got to go into the office, so it's a lot harder for me to do a task. Owie, yeah, you can't do things I can do here. <laughs> I don't always have to go in, but um, Tuesdays and Thursdays I do, and this week I had to go in on Monday and and Saturday and Friday. <sighs> Oh, oh, Friday. Um, Am I going to want to do that more? <laughs> was, was let's see, in um, Friday evening and then Saturday from 8 until 2 and then Monday from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m. It was, I will be very excited when we hit a certain um, uh, milestone on this project and we are back to five days a week instead of six. <laughs> so. A couple of our people did, in fact, go ahead and come in on Sunday, too. <laughs> so, oh, um, okay. Heather, I wanted to go to your con so much. I know you have such amazing guests, but, oh, my gosh, this month is crazy. I hope it goes awesome. Um, she's got um, Pip um, and T going down there. Uh, Pip, uh, uh, uh. Uh, Philippa Valentine, what's her last name? Um, and T. Morris, who are local to my region, who I've met several times, um, and a few other amazing guests who, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now and let her enjoy her own talk and maybe work on my, my blog post for tomorrow, which is all about how I totally flubbed the log line on my query this week. Hooray, the one thing I didn't help you with. <laughs> I know log lines, but we've been focused on the query so much. I, know, I yeah. forgot, and I just used my Twitter pitch instead of being like, log line, entire story, not just opening 
half, third. So, yeah, it'll be a mea culpa minute and a half, and then I'll go to bed. So, Catechist says hi, and he would like to claw the fuck out of my chair. I think you should leave the fuck in your chair because um, it was made that way. You can tell I'm tired because I'm cursing because I basically never curse. Oh, Pippin's here going to be on Zoom. Okay. I, um, oh, that makes sense. I'm surprised I'm not cursing more because usually I just drop those things like, you know. Right? Candy. Left and right? I really do. It's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I have to. Journalism, it's, I mean, everything is breaking and you have, you can't react, you have to, you know, respect, react factually yeah. to it instead of, yeah, yeah. so. Anyway, go ahead and do your thing. Uh, oh, oh, hey, I, I think that's a saying good night, right? And then me going away. Yeah. Catechist does in fact say hi, but um, he wandered mm -hmm. off again. Luckily, instead of clawing the bleep out of me. Okay. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching. Uh, Rewatch or, re or not. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not reading this last one, but it's like 1 a.m. Um, and there's so, so much to read through. <laughs> this is Korean Synopsis rewriting with uh, Patrick and Morgan. And we'll be back again when I have a spare cup evening because he's only free after 9.30. So we've got to wait until the stars align. And until Cthulhu the children sedated. Can be summoned. Oh, wait. We're, we're not summoning Cthulhu from the deeps? I yeah. who and hi honey. No, not this time. Okay, good. She's awake now. One of them is. Oh, dear. It's so, a lot of fun. I because I mean to focus on these things and really do things, which I think we can do pretty well. I need yeah. to not have to worry that I'm about to get you know slammed into you know my, my arm is like here they keep slamming it's yeah! and then suddenly like three <laughs> paragraphs are highlighted and like oh god what did I do right um, anyway so, um you so blog yeah. and blog and video and, and instant messenger and carrier pigeon and everything else from like ten miles away from me but we've never met in person because why bother. Yeah. I mean, it I mean so if you want to, I can host. I've got a patio. We don't even have to go inside in a fire pit. I mean, what would, I mean, it would just be like, I've known you for what, four and a half years? No, four years now? At least. You've never met yeah. What would be the point? I, I don't think you would do one. anything differently. Number two, I would see below, uh, I, I, your whole body would be visible, which is a bad idea um, for me, not you. <laughs> Um, because I would, anyway, men have a certain thing, at least. I'm hearing I would have to put on pants. Yes. You, what you do, what you wear is your business, but I would have to like, No, yeah, I meant and, you. I, I'm yes. wearing, wearing pants. I went on and off camera many times. Um, Ooh. I'm wearing my pajamas, which I wear all day, every day. As, 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 except to the bus stop and I'm. You could be sleeping right now if I would just shut up. Anyway, if you want help with your query or your synopsis for your pitch or your first page, um, holler at us, me, us, thingy. Um, yeah. I'm on Twitter at Author Hopkins, which is weird because I have, I'm not an author. I, I'm a writer. I publish stuff, but it's not, you know, but whatever Twitter's yes. fun. Yes. And Morgan yes. is Morgan Hizzlewood on Twitter and Morgan Hazelwood everywhere else, including carrierpigeon.com. No, joking. probably. <laughs> I there just opened one. up. A, I opened a medium this week. There is. I'm not on enough platforms. There is a, a new one actually. It's called Display. There's a trivia game. Um, I won 22 bucks tonight playing it. Uh, it was great. Um, it's um, it's very very new. Um, I don't think it's like Parlor in the sense that I don't think it, it favors in. How do I say this without getting sued? I'm gonna stop there. I don't think it's like parlor. That's enough that I, I don't need to say more. Because you need to know or you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, so, I'm that's shutting it down. Promising. Um, but I I'm not an early adopter, but I am an eventual adopter of <laughs> almost everything, except I have not gotten on TikTok because I know exactly how much I already use Snapchat and I'm a little in eh about their owned by China and the LGBTQ. Yeah. Uh, stance there. So, also, I, I never use my Snapchat already. So, another thing to not use. Why even bother? Yeah, exactly. Other I than reserving my name so nobody else can use it, but you can't do that without downloading the app. And I, we know that somebody has a problem with leaving um, accounts unused. <laughs> is that this person? Hold on. Is that this person right here? <laughs> yes. Well, can yes. I be doing, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to point down toward anybody ever, 
but I can point up safely. <laughs> uh, just now would, would like a carrier pigeon and Heather says, I can relate. I've been calling myself an author, editor, artist for a while, but I'm not really an author yet. My friends, my friend Doc, who does my live stream with me on Sundays, has told me that I am a pre-published author. I'm an author. I'm just pre-published. Because I'm not very published yet, but so I will be. Research, and I, I have um, some professional writing that I've done that's been published. It, it, it went through a vetting process for publication, basically. My medium stuff is just me writing stuff that's, you know, convenient. Um, but no, I don't have to prove it. I prove it by myself, and that's, you know, that's yeah. called self-publishing. Yeah. Anyway. I... The Insecure Writers Group, um, on their nonfiction, they did actually print my um, 10 questions to ask your beta readers. But I got no money from it, so. Yeah, I, I also published something uh, about um, letting my daughter try to eat a rock. It was free. Um, her teeth are fine. She discovered that rocks don't taste good, which was the point. Anyway. And she has replacement teeth coming anyway. Yes, she was two. So it was a good age at which to learn that rocks don't taste like food. I think I have a chipped tooth. I forget which one it is. Do, 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 do the gross face work and do it. Do, keep doing it. That was really great. <laughs> I would love to have that be that thumbnail. <laughs> um, because because I was little. I was little when I was a kid. Um, even after I got my permanent teeth. Um, Where are you, Morgan? That's a really surprise. <laughs> And I was under my bed, and I hit my my permanent tooth on the frame when I was trying to crawl out from underneath it. Were you still little at that point? <laughs> I'm just saying, my sister and I alternated for smallest kid in the grade all the way through like tenth grade. Oh wow, that's that's good to know. So if I were how tall are you? Why am I asking? I am that? five four and a half. Oh, and a half. That's my identical twin is five six. I'm reminded of an episode of David the Gnome that I will not get into because we were supposed to. You were supposed to be asleep half an hour ago. Weren't but you? I love David the Gnome. I've seen yeah, all it was episodes a, like twice. You remember the episode where they they have the one kid who's not growing, and they give him the magical treatment, and like he you know goes up and up and up until he's you know tall and they, yeah, yeah. I also had um, an office mate who um, had a, a imbalance that he didn't digest properly, yeah. and he had to actually like chug cornstarch to get the right mix of. But he was like a foot and a half shorter than his siblings. Mm -hmm. That sounds um, right. And and my one of my dear friends uh, got diagnosed with celiac in her twenties, mm -hmm. yeah. and went off of gluten and grew an inch and a half. Because her body finally got nutrients and wasn't Yeah, that, was, yeah that, that sounds right. A lot of the, um, never mind. It's, we'll get off onto a tangent and then. Okay, anyway, thank you all for watching. We'll be back Ooh. next time I get a chance, sometime next week, at least Wednesday, if nothing else. Um, so have a great week and good luck with your queries and synopses. And if you want to join in, uh, read, read the links below and try your best to get it as close as you can, but there's no way to do it with your own eyes. So it's, you can't. So, so thank you all for coming. Bye.